Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the final game of the Olympi Olympic Ice Hockey Competition from Hacken Hall in Lillehammer. I'm Paul Ferguson. Richard Beaupre is here. Canada and Sweden are going for gold. Well, the Swedes haven't yet picked up a gold medal. They've had two silver and four bronze. The Canadians with six gold. If you count the gold medal they picked up in 1920, or 1920 rather in the summer games in Antwerp, Belgium. The Winnipeg Falcons were the winners then. 1924 was the Toronto Granites. 1928, University of Toronto Grads. 1932, Winnipeg Hockey Club. And 1948, the Royal Canadian Air Force Flyers. 1952, the Edmonton Mercuries. So the Canadian national team is going for gold here for the first time in a long time 42 years to be exact and the canadians will start with 21 year old corey hirsch between the pipes and he is sharp he's one of the hot goaltenders in the competition corey hirsch took a shot off the inside of his left knee during the warm-ups he went limping off the ice, but he came back on with about five minutes to go. Apparently they iced it down, and he's ready to play. Well, we'll see how that materializes. But uh, on the defense, they're strong with Adrian Oquan, Derek Meyer, Warenka, Lubson, and Schlegel. Harlock has been playing some good hockey up front. Korea, Norris, Johnson, Savage, Schreiber has been looking good. Nedved, of course, has been popping the goals along with Wa and Kontos. The Swedes, well, they've got so much depth. Salo is the goaltender, the New York Islanders' fifth round draft pick in 93, still only 23 years old. And on defense, Thomas Janssen, Duboya, Rolene, Johansson, all these guys are putting up a great fight. They all have big shots, including Frederick Stillman, the 27-year-old who wears number 14. Offensively, they're the, one of the strongest in the competition. Ornskog has been playing well out there. Hack and Lube and Naslin, these guys are experienced campaigners. NHL experience, World Championship experience, Olympic experience. Roger Hansen wears number 11. He's one of my favorite forwards for the Swedes. A gutsy guy who can work hard, can score goals, can set them up. Bergfist, Shelberg, Shelberg who went to the Montreal Canadiens last year. He was farmed out to the Maritime Provinces. He's uh, now back with the Swedish national team and he's playing better than ever. Eulen leads the charts in scoring seven goals and one assist for eight points. Lube with four goals and four assists. They've been the big two scorers, but Hansen, as you said, has been impressive. Five goals and two assists for seven points. Kurt Lundmark, the coach for the Swedish team, has done a great job here getting these guys through to the final, as has Tom Rennie, the Canadian coach. Rennie hasn't had a lot of major experience. Most of it's been either junior or world junior championship experience, but he's here and he's in the finals, so you can't knock it. The Canadians have announced that George Kingston, Tom Rennie, and Dan Dubay will all be a part of the 94 World Championship Games. George Kingston is the head of operations for the Canadian organization. Against each other, the Canadians and the Swedes have played 13 times since 1920. The Canadians are 11 wins, one loss, and one draw. The draw coming in Calgary in 1988. The loss coming in Sarajevo in 84, a 2-0 defeat by the Swedes. So the Swedes are getting better against the Canadians. Not 84 and 88 have been their highlights. Three times in 93-94, the teams met, and the Canadians won two out of those three games. The last goal for Canada as I said, was back in 52, and that was also in Norway, so we'll see what they can do on this occasion. We're waiting for the teams to come out on the ice, and as always, we have an excellent crowd here in Hacken Hall. The numbers increasing as we get closer to the final, and as you can see in your picture, we have a capacity crowd. It should be something close to 10,000, They'll be jamming them in right to the top, standing room only. The team's still not out on the ice yet, and uh, we're looking forward to a really good hockey game. The Finns 
blanked the Russians yesterday 4-0 to pick up the bronze medal. And the Finns, for my money, were the best team in the competition. They certainly have the best record, only losing one game. And uh, they made a slip up against Canada. That knocked them out of this final round. But they certainly performed better than any other team in the competition. And they have nothing to be ashamed of with that bronze medal. I think it's a pity, though, that they had to be there and not here today. But Canada is here. Sweden are here. And I guess, folks, the favorites have to be the Swedes. I would say so. We've said it all along that the Swedes came into the tournament favorites. They've got experience. Yep, youth, they've got it all. Goal scorers, good defense. The Canadians have gotten better and better as the games have gone on. And Tom Rennie in the local newspaper says, put your money on Canada. He's confident the Canadians with the first round win over the Swedes are ready to play hockey. And it's going to be interesting. The Swedes are very clever indeed. Sometimes the Canadians can be a bit erratic. They have excellent goaltending. Defensively, I guess that could be their weak point, the Canadians. Well, one bright spot has been Brad Waranka. He's had an outstanding Olympic Games, but penalties are going to be key as well, Paul. The Swedes have scored nine power play goals in these Olympic Games, so I think the Canadians have done their homework, and they know they've got to stay out of the box. The Canadians seem to be changing their lines from game to game. We saw Kantos, Korea, and Nedved in the first game, and then they switched around, and... Uh, do you think Rennie has finally found his formula? Well, he seems happy. He's splitting Korea and Nedved up was a gutsy move. Korea, the great playmaker. Nedved, the goal scorer. Korea's got two goals and four assists. Nedved's got five goals and one assist. But having split them up, they seem to have been stronger because of it. Schreiber has moved in there. Schreiber going up front with Nedved and Waugh. Johnny's Waugh is a speedster on the wing. He's a good guy to watch. He'll be heading back to Binghamton. He was leading goal scorer in the, AA, in the Binghamton team of the AHL. Lushko plays with Parks and Fabian Joseph, the captain. Korea goes with Johnson and Contos. And you will see plenty of Dwayne Norris, number 10. The Newfie, who's on the Canadian team doing an outstanding job, as well as Brian Savage. They've got four lines of hockey they can play. Johnson is playing with a Broken nose and five stitches from the eye to the nose. And uh, he started with a visor, threw that off. He doesn't like it. A lot of players feel they can't see, and it affects their hearing as well. And so he's playing without that visor, which is, well, gutsy move for him. But uh, Astley, we know, has a sore ankle, but he's going to be out there. And Parks is bruised and battered, but we understand he's still going to be playing. Parks will be there without a doubt. He's a good, tough guy. Great playmaker. He's won plenty of face-offs. They need him. Todd Warner is not in the lineup. He had a bruised ankle, and they've elected to sit him out. The rumors are that he is going to the Quebec organization immediately after these Olympic Games are over. Well, Forsberg could be going to Quebec, too. He's one of the players to watch out there for Sweden. Number 21, Peter Forsberg. Some say the best hockey player outside the National Hockey League. 20 years old and uh, drafted by Philadelphia but involved in that trade with Lindros. He goes on to Quebec and the rumor has it that he'll be there right after these games. And it's all down to money now whether he goes or not. Well, the division with the Canadians, yes, it is a question of money, Paul, not to change the subject. The Quebec Nordiques are trying to figure out whether they can afford the guy. Back to the NHL organizations will be Harlock, Hirsch, Waugh, Johnson, Norris and Warner, apparently, Savage, Schlegel and Warenko. The European players on the Canadian team, Parks plays in Lexand. Alain Waugh, the third string goalie, will go back to Helsinki. Schreiber plays in Hedosh, which is Munich, where Dieter Hagen plays, the veteran from the German team. This is the 46th game on the 16th day. It really has been a grueling schedule for these teams. And to make it worse, as we've already said, a lot of these guys will jump on a plane either tonight or tomorrow morning and complete schedules in North America or Europe. Some will go to the NHL. And uh, if you've been following the NHL over the years, that goes sometimes right until June. Uh, if you're lucky enough to make it through to the Stanley Cup playoffs, 84 games in the National Hockey League, and you could add on a number th another 35 for playoffs if you go the distance. So some of these guys could be playing well into June, and uh, they really will 
be feeling it by then, I can assure you. This schedule here, eight games in 16 days. Some played eight games in 15 days. And uh, the other night, when the Finns beat the Russians, it looked as if they were playing their first game. They looked really fresh, whereas the Russians were sluggish and they just couldn't get started. Some excellent hockey from the Finns to go back to the bronze medal winners. And uh, they really did look sharp and they looked fit and they looked fresh. They had a good game and it was just down to the pressure at the end of it all. The Russians coming back strong against the Swedes, but it was too little, too late. Finland beating the Russians 4-0, two goals in the first period, two goals in the second period, and that's all they needed to put the Russians away for the second shutout over the Russians, and it was the first time in their history that the Russians, if you include them with the Soviet Union and the unified team, first time that they didn't pick up a medal, and that's going back to 1958, so a great record has been broken. We take a look at the Swedish lineup now. As they get set to come on the ice, the trumpets announce the teams, and uh, everyone's starting to stand and applaud. One guy who really has been a pleasant surprise for me is number three, Christian Duboya. This guy has been so solid, 27 years old, plays his hockey in Djurgården in Sweden, and uh, he's getting a lot of ice time. The Canadians now stepping up to go out on the ice. See if we can take a look at Johnson, unless he's already passed. His uh, eye and his nose badly bruised, but he's out there and he's playing some good hockey. Point of human interest, Elgotsen, the Swedish goaltender, who is not in the lineup today. The backup will be Sunlove, Michael Sunlove. Hakan Elgotsen flew back to Sweden. His wife gave birth to a baby girl at 9 o'clock yesterday morning. Sunlove is back there, and we wish him well. Well, we've got the opportunity. We would like to thank you for all your letters and faxes and phone calls of support over the past couple of weeks. We really appreciate it. Rob Hearn is a referee. And uh, we just got a fax the other day from Mr. Frederick Meredith, the president of the British Ice Hockey Association. Good to know that you're watching and you're enjoying the uh, programs that we put here on Eurosport. Kurt Lundmark behind one bench and Tom Rennie along with Danny Dubay behind the Canadian bench and both guys have a lot to be proud of. They really have done their homework. The Canadians came here with a team that was thrown together at the last moment. A lot of these guys have never played together, whereas the Swedes have played together for some considerable time. I think that's fair to say, but the Canadians in particular got together at short notice, and uh, they have done well, and I think a lot of that has to be down to Rennie and Dubay but let's not take anything away from Lundmark. He's worked hard with this Swedish team. And um, they're looking for their first gold. Tommy Salo loosening himself up around the Swedish goal. Salo has played in five games. He's had 104 saves. 89.42 saves percentage. Goals against average of 2.20 and one shutout if you're following statistics. Corey Hirsch at the other end of the ice has played all seven games for the Canadians. He's faced 199 shots. He's only allowed 14 goals, a 1.98 goals against average. 21-year-old Hirsch from Medicine Hat in Alberta. American Hockey League Player of the Year. Played a few games to the New York Rangers and uh, just wasn't capable at this time anyway of breaking into the lineup. And so... He decided to go with the Canadian Olympic team and hope that uh, that will change things for him. Tommy Salo, 23 years old. As I said, the Islanders' fifth pick in 93. The Swedes will be playing from right to left. Rob Hearn calls the teams together. This is for gold. The loser will pick up silver. We already know the Finns have bronze. Forsberg, that comes back to Mayer. Mayer drops it, and the Canadians start it up right through the middle. A little tip is knocked down. Janssen is up there in a hurry. Joseph, 
comes up to his own blue. That's tipped away, and Janssen gets over the red line and fires it in. Kirsch gets his first touch as Mayer is back for Canada. Parks. Parks trying to get away from Hansen. Hansen. Parks and the Canadians have held on to the puck for the first few seconds. Everybody on the line just about has had a touch. Parks is offside on the plate. Mayer and Parks getting involved on the first shift of the game. Mayer, the leading penalty getter on the Canadians with 18 minutes. Parks has 10 minutes. Two rough and tumble guys, but they know they've got to stay out of the box in this game. The Swedes will punish the Canadians if they get penalties. Face off in neutralized territory. 36 seconds gone on the period. This is live on Eurosport. And you can see Johnson in the face off. And Johnson being told to get out with that serious eye damage. Contos now goes in for Canada. Yulene. Rudmark. And Naslin, the three forwards out on the ice for the Swedes all along the boards. Yulene goes in hard, and Schlegel ties him up. Johnson, a little tip along the boards, and that comes all the way back to Johansson, who throws it into neutralized territory. The Canadians, with the first minute of play gone, working hard on the right side. Korea, little tip to the far side to Kontos. Kontos being shadowed by Svensson. Johansson bounces it off the boards, but Korea picks it up right out front. Johnson! Salo is there! Big save! Whoa, the Canadians were wide open. Johansson along the boards is one defenseman that had moved over, but where, were the, where was the second Swedish defenseman? They really were out to lunch on this one. A good, quick pass. Johnson is all alone in front of the Swedish goal. Salo is left stranded. He comes up big. Key save there right at the start of the game for Tommy Salo. Face off in the Swedish zone as that comes all the way back. Well, Rinka takes the shot and misses the net. Lube on the far side. Lube, long pass up to Ornskog. That's too far. Shelberg goes after it on the far side and that comes all the way down onto the D and the big forward Shelberg gets it up. Ornskog drops it back. Nedved tries to get it away from Shelberg and the Swedes get it right out front and the Canadians just fire it down the ice. Icing is the call. Shelberg, Orns, Cog and Lube. Three guys that the Canadians know very well and can't be given any room. Quick breakdown in the play and the Canadians happy to take an icing call. Tom Rennie talking things over behind the bench. He knows exactly what he wants there. 140 gone on the period. Face off deep in Canadian territory now. Nedved goes off his skate. Orskog puts it behind the net. Lube slams on the brakes and Lube is dumped. Ridmark. Shelberg, or rather, Shelberg along there with Wah. Wah takes it away, puts it up along the boards and that goes over the blue line. Ornskog goes back. Stillman. Frederick Stillman. Long pass up on the wing. Shelberg is there. Nedved. Just happy to flip it into the zone and the Canadians get in a hurry. Little tap out front and a shot comes in. Lushko had gone in quickly. Wall was in there too. Some good offensive stuff from Lushko. Nedved with Shelberg on him. Nedved taps it over to Waugh. Waugh has got the great speed. Gives it to Nedved. The shot. And again, Salo comes up with a big save for the Swedes. The clearance is batted down by Schreiber. Schreiber bounces that off the boards. And the Canadians continue to pressure here. Stillman. Both teams looking for a change out there. Janssen. Working with Jürgen Janssen. Bounces off a skate, and the Swedes will have to go back to pick it up. Eriksson. Janssen. Long pass up the middle, and that goes the distance. And we, another, we have another whistle on the play as Loveson goes back for Canada. Swedes look very unorganized right now. Coming out of their own zone, they're scary. They just don't seem to know what to do with the puck. 
the Canadians are putting good pressure on, but the Swedes normally get into a flow of play that they're not being allowed to get into right now. Three eleven gone on the period, and from the faceoff, the Swedes break. Going over to an open wing. Janssen taps it in. Wicked bounce off that backboard. Lovson gets it out. And Janssen, Thomas this time, gets it over to Kenny Janssen. And three Janssens out there. Norris circles back. Warenka off the boards, gunning for Norris. And stopped at the blue or the red line rather and shot in. Warenka deep up on the right side. Warenka has got good wheels. Hammers that off the board. Salo comes out. Svensson is there. Can't get it by Korea. Korea sidesteps a check by Hansen and the big Swedish defenseman. Svensson gets it up to Johansson, who's even bigger. Johansson from the red line. The blue. Johansson moving in. Tries to get a high stick on that. Batted down. Forsberg got it to an open wing. Savage flips it out of the zone and Johansson gets back. Johansson getting it up to... 21 Forsberg, he can't handle it. Parks goes in quickly. Parks with Johansson staring him right in the face. Joseph behind the net. A little tap along the boards to Lushko. Lushko is grabbed by Svensson. Joseph back to the blue. The Canadians now throwing the puck around. Salo way out of his net. Rattles it off the boards and the Swedes pick it up along the boards. This is tight, this is fast. Long pass up to Parks, and he just flips it in. The Canadians looking to get fresh legs out there. Joseph still out on the ice. A long shift for him. He heads for the bench, and the Canadians at the five-minute mark bring it up on the right side. Still no score in this one. Schlegel. Stillman. Naslin. Naslin up on the right wing. Breaks in the center. Pass up to Rudmark. Rudmark drops it back. The shot came in right at the target. Hirsch makes a save. Stillman right at the blue line. Flips it off the Plexi. Rudmark out front. Naslin is there and the pass comes out. And Canada with Contos drops it off. The puck was just drifted down to the Swedish defense. Rudmark puts it up to Yulene. Yulene goes in against Astley. Still with Yulene. Astley drags him down and the Canadians bring it up quickly. The whistle blows. First penalty of the game. It's going against the Canadians. The crowd calling that one before the referee did. Astley getting the stick in on Yulene as he comes around the net. A couple of other players sideswipe the pair of them. Astley goes to the box for hooking. 5.44, the time of the penalty. It took a long time for that whistle to go. Very loud in this building. The crowd, a very verbal. And referee Hearn. Had the penalty call on Astley and the Swedes with a power play opportunity. They've scored nine power play goals, as we've said before, in these Olympic Games. Parks and Forsberg are being told to leave Lube and Lushko will do it now. It bounces back to Janssen, kept in well by him. First is out, the Canadians rattle it off the boards. Janssen, Forsberg. Janssen, Hack and Lube. Lube tips it back. Janssen playing with Lube out there. Lube puts it over the red line. Lubson goes after Forsberg. Back to Lube. Gets it right out front. The one time comes score! Janssen had moved up from the blue line. Power play goal. Not very often does Thomas Janssen show emotion, but he is one happy guy right now. 33-year-old veteran and a household name, especially in New York, having played so many years with the Islanders, drills this one as he comes into the play. The first goal is on the board for the Swedes, and it's a power play effort. Good work down low. Forsberg dumps it off to Lube. Lube immediately looks to Janssen, who sends that past Corey Hirsch. Six ten, the time of the goal. The first penalty of the game results 
in the first goal of the game. That comes back now to Svensson. Svensson finds an opening and shoots it down the ice. Warenka is there for Canada. Nedved circles and goes up on the right side and Warenka pops it up to Meyer. Meyer's pass is not a good one. Johansson for Sweden. Elects to drive that in. And that goes over the board. We're going to have another face-off. Good start for the Swedes with Janssen getting that goal. We see from inside the net. Now goalie Hirsch moved on that one. It took the Swedes 26 seconds into their power play to score. Medved against Rudmark. Rudmark drops that back and the Swedes with Svensson. Svensson goes up against Schreiber. Meyer is back. Meyer up on the right wing. The Canadians stopped by Naslin. Naslin riddles that off the boards. Nedved throws it back. Not a great pass from him. Yulin is out front. Naslin back to the blue line. The shot comes in off the backboards. Warenka drops Yulin. The two struggle along the boards. Rudmark trying to get in there. Warenka gives that right to Naslin. Naslin pops along. Spenson is hammered by Mayer. And the Canadians start to muscle as the Swedes throw the puck around in the zone. The goal has definitely changed the play for the Swedes. They are now pressing Canadians hard. Waugh goes after Johansson and the Swedes bring it out of their own zone. Both teams are changing on the fly. Svensson comes up to the blue, takes the shot and that's deflected high. And this pace is picking up here in the first period. Schlegel getting a piece of the shot coming off the stick of Svensson. It'll allow both teams to change again. Good tough action. It's really tough along the boards and in the corners. The Swedes are now really pressing the Canadians. Ornskog goes into the face-off circle and again the centermen are being told to leave. Savage goes out, Ornskog goes out. Shelberg kicks that back. Rolin peppers it into the zone. Shelberg is there to send it back. Astley keeps it going along the boards. And the Canadians just get it out. Ornskog almost taken off the play. A big chop there. And Korea for Canada. Schlegel. Little pass up on the right side and the Canadians do not look that organized at this stage of this period. Shelberg gets it back. The Swedes are using the full ice surface out there. Janssen sends it off. That wasn't a great clearance. Astley peppers it back in. Loose puck at the side of the net. Savage is there. Rolene stays on him. Norris now. Norris on the backhand. Norris flips around, takes the shot. That stopped before it reaches Salo. And the Swedes get it out to Shelberg. Lude with Shelberg. Lude slams on the brakes. Puts it right in front. Hirsch. Shelberg and Hirsch went down. That one right in the crease. And Astley came up with the puck. That was close. The Lube line once again. Causing all kinds of problems. Shelberg only had one hand on the stick. Almost made something out of that. Kenny Janssen took a big shot there. That deflected away. Parks doesn't get it out of the zone. And the Canadians trying to spread it out. Lushko. Pops it into the corner. Nine minutes gone. Parks. Joseph is tied up. Parks loses out along the boards. And the Canadians stack the right side. Parks flips it into the corner. Hard shot. Still doesn't get out of the zone. And now the Canadians go back to the red line to try to pick it up. Parks gets back. And eventually Warenka. Finds himself behind his own red line. Warenka has good speed. Joseph, the captain. Drop pass. Lushko breaks to the left. Joseph is up center. Lovson. Little flip into the zone. Salo is there. Svensson gets it from Salo. And the Swedes are getting back in a hurry. Erickson. Erickson 
Drops it off for Dackel. And the fourth line is out there for the Swedes. Ten minutes gone on the first period. The Canadians now starting it up from their own blue line. Flip over. Svensson gets in in a hurry. Warenka has lost his stick. Erickson goes in hard on the boards on Johnson. Forsberg is out there now. He picks up the puck and moves behind his own goal. Both teams changing on the fly. Contos is roughed up in front of the goal by Johansson. And the Swedes now move it out on the left side of the goal. Forsberg, stick handling, trying to go through three Canadians. Schlegel tipped it forward, and that didn't work. Schlegel goes back to pick up the loose puck. Off the boards, looked like a two-line pass to me. Johnson is there. Stillman is there. Rolin eventually gets it and pounces that off the boards. And the Canadians go back on the defensive in neutralized territory. Stillman flips it high, and both teams will complete their change out there. It's been a long time without a whistle. Contos. Rudmark, some clever stuff by him as the Canadians... Struggle to get it out of the zone. Hansen wants it in the corner. Bergfist, stick handling, gives it back to Hansen. He overskates that. Rudmark is there. One hand on the stick. Back to the blue. The tip right in front by Hansen. Just trickled by the far post. The Canadians. A little desperate. Slice it out of the zone. Rudmark brings it right back up. Big shot. Hirsch makes the pad save. Rudmark. Off the plexi, trying to get it out on the other side of the rink, and the Canadians do that for him. Right back into the corner, Yulin. Naslin. Naslin peppers it through. Yulin from the side of the net. Hirsch is down. Canadians very fortunate that Yulin couldn't find the handle on the puck as he came toward the goal. Swedes are really moving the puck around nicely, and it's not because of poor defense. The Canadians are staying as close as they possibly can. Ridmar getting it back to Stillman. He lets it go. A nice tip right in front by Hansen. That goes wide. Eleven forty-seven gone on the first period of this final between Canada and Sweden. The Swedes are winning by one goal to nil. Rudmark in the face-off circle. And the Czech Canadian Nedved gets it back. Mayer whistles that around the boards and the Swedes go all the way down with Thomas Janssen behind his own red line. Kenny Janssen is out there too and drop pass. Naslin Rudmark, Rudmark tries to get the shot away and that's blocked with the defense. Schreiber comes up quickly. Schreiber is muscled out of the play by Janssen. Some good stuff from him. Kenny Janssen now picks it up. Janssen is a mountain of a man. The Swedes have so many big defensemen. Naslin gives that up. Schlegel just throws it in over the blue line. And Canada with Nedved in there. Nedved eventually goes back into neutralized territory. Both teams again trying to change on the plate. Lou got that from Janssen, drops it back to Janssen. A long flip all the way down to Hirsch. Lou is there. Schlegel. Schlegel, long pass up to the blue. Canada having problems putting the passes together. The Swedes are skating fast. Not clever stuff from the Canadian Shelberg. Lude. One or two passes are really, really poor out there for the Canadians. Wah unable to get that. Schreiber gets it at the red line. His clearance in bounces for Savage. The shot is a weak one. Salo hangs on to that and back comes Ornskog. Ornskog gets away from Korea. Offside is the call. Shelberg just a stride over. And the Swedes are outskating the Canadians right now here in the first period. They lead by one. Schoberg not convinced with the offside call. He seemed to be in a better position to make it than the linesman as he was standing right in front of him. Offsides is the call. Both teams will change again. The action is fast and the shifts have got to be short. King Harold of Norway along with Juan Antonio Samaranch, the IOC president. Enjoying this one, 13:28, the time 
gone on the period. Stillman. Harlock. Harlock throws that back, and the Canadians with Meyer, long pass, gunning for Savage. That didn't work. Korea goes in after his man. Korea really hasn't had much of the puck in this one. Harlock off the boards. The whistle on the play. We have some pushing and shoving as the Canadians change up again. The eighth game in 16 days. They're going to make it short out there. It's right at the blue line, like on this last play that just happened, that the Canadians are going to have to push to take the Swedes out. There's a good shot of Johnson on the bench. That was a puck that hit his face. Compliments of his line mate, Brian Savage. Accidental, of course. Coming up to the 14-minute mark. 1-0 the score. Stillman at his own blue line. Rolene. Rolene, a high flick on down to Hirsch. Hirsch gloves it down. Those can be very, very tricky indeed when they're flipping through the air, especially if the puck lands on its edge. It can go right, it can go left, it can do any number of things. Johnson tied up in the circle by Parks and the Canadians with three players along the boards. Lushko wants to grab that and number 16, Erickson provides a little pushing and shoving. The Canadians come up with a puck. Lubson tries to break through. Stillman spins him around. And the Swedes now back on the attack. Rolene coming up quickly. Rolene with room to move out there. The shot came in. Hirsch got a piece of it. Erickson muscled out of the plate. Canada bring it up on the right wing. Thrown into center. Wawrinka drop pass shot and the save made by Salo Forsberg dumps it right in front of his bench and Savage shoots it in again both teams changing on the play Janssen slows it down and waits for his team to complete the change Forsberg goes one way the pass comes up to Janssen up on the wing the Canadians will slice that one away Parks Contos along the boards Schlegel Rink wide pass. Canada trying to get something going here. Janssen. Canada started well with a couple of good shots on Salo, but since then it really has been mostly Sweden with the possession. Working quickly up on the right side. A chance now for Korea. Korea slams on the brakes, but Janssen got the puck. Johnson goes after Janssen, and that's thrown into center ice territory. Bergfist just slides it back. Forsberg leaves it for Svensson. Svensson fires that forward. The Canadians chopping that down before it started. Mayer to the far side. Both teams have completed their change. That scoots away from Shelberg, and the Canadians go back deep in their own zone. 1 0 the score here in the first period. Mayer. Mayer coming up slowly, hits the red line and just pushes that down the ice. Svensson. Svensson gets away from Waugh. Stopped. Shot coming in. Warenka pumps it away. It comes all the way back on the D and the Canadians not threatening Salo from close in. Rink wide pass is intercepted. Naslin is dumped right at the blue line. Canada back on the attack with Nedbud. He bounces it off the board. Schreiber goes down the ice. Schreiber goes in hard, and that's cleared as far as the hash marks with Nedbud getting there in a hurry. Schreiber trying to get it to Nedbud. Nedbud comes in and gets it himself. Throws it all the way back. Lovson pumps it along the boards. Svensson tying up Nedbud. Nedbud gets it right in front. Naslin picked up the puck and shot it down the ice. High sticking is the call. Hearn makes his way to the penalty box. Canadians with a good spell, controlling the puck down low. Good work from Wally Schreiber and Peter Nedved. Roline, big defenseman, by sticking around the front of his own goal. And now the Canadians have a power play. 16.58, the time of the penalty to Roline. for 39 on the power plate. 
for the Canadians and 90% at killing these things off for the Swedes. Good figures. Astley shoots the puck and the Canadians struggle right at their own blue line. Ornskog getting the shin pads in the way of that. Lude pressurizing there. The Canadians, Norris getting it up, working from the top of the circle. Savage got it in behind the goal. Norris is there. Norris taking off the puck, and that's shot down the ice. Astley calls for it. Hirsch gives it to him. Little tap up to the blue. Norris pushes that along the boards, and the Canadians throw it right back at Norris. Savage and Norris working hard out there. Korea dropped in the corner. Norris, Savage gets it back. Astley takes a lot of time setting that one up. Norris moves in. Norris takes the shot. The save is there from Salo. One minute, four seconds on the power plate. And the Swedes flip it down the ice. Norris just trying to test Salo to see if he was awake. It wasn't the greatest of angles, but you never know. Lube almost broke that one up right on the blue line. Dropped back by Contos. Nedved. Back to the blue line. Johnson the shot. Glove hand saved by Salo right through the traffic. Not a bad shot. The idea was right. Johnson putting it right into the glove of Salo though. Who had a view of it just inside the blue. Schreiber's coming to the front of the goal. He's got big Johnson all over him. The save is made and held on to anyways by Salo. Johnson dropping back onto the D on the power play for the Canadians. Both teams getting set now for this faceoff in the Swedish zone. 42 seconds on the power play. Nedved still out there for Canada. Nedved wins the draw. That comes back to Johnson. Johnson dances in front of the blue line. Gives that to Nedved. Nedved walking along the top of the circle. Nedved with a lot of time out there. The one-timer comes in. And that goes off the arm. Goes high. And Nedved wants the face off inside. The Swedes want it outside. He was definitely off Salo. The face off should stay inside. Salo's faced eight shots so far in the game. Faceoff moves to the far side of the rink. Savage goes in for Canada. Forsberg taking his time out there as Norris gets rid of some tape on a stick. We're set now. Forsberg against Savage. Canadians winning these draws as that comes back. Astley moves along. The shot comes in. That's high. 18 seconds on the power play now. The Canadians tip it right into the corner. Stillman going in hard as the Canadians move it along the boards. Nedved. Norris gets it back. And Canada try to set it up. That's tipped high. Norris waiting for it right beside the net. Korea tries to move it around. Savage is out front. Johansson takes it away along the boards. And the Swedes have killed off the power play. Less than a minute remaining on the period. Bergfist. Bergfist being pressured into the boards by Astley. Norris ties up Hansen. And this is where fights start. If the whistle doesn't blow soon enough, these guys continue to push and put the sticks in and sometimes the skates. Once a player has been knocked down onto the ice, the whistle really should blow. That's where a guy is going to take a stupid injury. Swede's doing a good job of killing the penalty out. Big Roger Johansson, number 34. Did an excellent job on Paul Correa, who has slipped by quite a few people. Around the side of the goal, he's lethal, and Johansson didn't give him any room to move. Forty-one seconds remaining on the first period. One-nil the score on that goal by Johnson. Goodmark and Parks tie each other up. The Canadians taken off the puck by Bergfist, and that's flipped all the way back onto the Canadian defense. 29 seconds now on the period. The Canadians trying those short passes. Parks racing in. Janssen is there. Salo caught out of his nets. Another whistle on the plate. Oh, 
how much Janssen, the thinker's man out there, he's just looking around. He wants to assess the play. He's asking the referee what's going on. You can see Janssen, the wheels were just burning in his head. Goaltender flipping that very high. And we're looking to see perhaps if there's a delay of game penalty. If it goes over the plexi, if the goaltender shoots it out of the rink, then it's a penalty. But there's some meshing up there. And I think the referee, that's the call. The referee wanted to ask the linesman if there was a tip before it went over. But Salo was not allowed to shoot the puck out of the rink, even if he puts it up on the meshing. That still counts as going out on the rink, out of the rink, rather. The mesh isn't a part of play. Once it's over the plexiglass, the whistle is always blown. Exactly right. The linesmen were asked if they heard or saw a tip on the play. Hearn then made his decision. You can see the Swedish coaching staff asking the linesmen why he didn't see what they think they saw. We've seen that call made a couple of times in this competition, and it's exactly right. And if the goalie shoots it out, of the ice rink, then it's a two-minute delay of penalty and a uh, delay of game penalty. We even saw it called once by the Finnish referee when a defenseman shot it over the boards. Shelberg goes to the penalty box to sit for Salo, who of course will not go off the ice. But the Swedes will have a man in the box. Medved and Jorgen Jonsson are kicked out of the face-off circle. Ornskog was in there. Contos will do the honors for Canada. Ornskog got it back, and the Swedes will take the opportunity to shoot it all the way down the ice. Wawenka. Ten seconds. Eight seconds now on the period. The power play, unless the Canadians score, will go into the second period. Offside is the call. The yellow shirts stacked up along the blue line. Warenka had to put one extra move on. A couple of red shirts going over the blue line ahead of him. The Swedes should get out of this to the end of the period. They'll be penalized for a minute and 39 seconds of the second period. Face off outside the Swedish zone. Bounces along the board. Stillman tries up ties up Contos rather and that goes all the way down the ice there goes the buzzer to end a really fast and physical first period the Swedes coming up with the only goal on the power play that was Janssen the defenseman and so they lead it by one goal to nil very even contest the Swedes probably had the better quality shots but the only difference in the game is through that power play effort that Janssen converted Well, both goaltenders, Corey Hirsch and Tommy Salo, have looked solid. They were tested right from the opening stages in this contest, and uh, they really are looking sharp out there. The Canadians really haven't had the better of the play. The Swedes have dominated, I feel, for most of the first period. And uh, during the break, we're going to have some slalom skiing, so stay with us. We'll be back for the second period after the break. Final on Eurosport. Sweden against Canada. The Swedes are leading with that lone goal from Janssen at 6-10 in the first period on the power play. The teams are coming out on the ice, and the fans here are really enjoying themselves. They get into the music, they dance, they paint their faces. It's an incredible atmosphere. The Canadians are here in full force. All the athletes, the skiers, the skaters, and the same support is being given to the Swedes. Not a lot in the shots, Bopes, but the Swedes are on the scoreboard. Power play goal says it all. 7-6 favoring the Canadians. Shots on goal. The Canadians will have a power play when this period starts. 
Salo getting that delay of game penalty. 1939 of the first period. Shelberg is serving it. That'll go on for a maximum of up to 139 in the period unless the Canadians can score. Salo came up big on a couple of occasions in that first period right at the start with Johnson left all alone. Hirsch has had a couple of fine saves. Hirsch appears to have recovered from that knock in the warm-up. Shelberg sits in the penalty box for that delay of game penalty. There's enough pressure on the goalies that are in the game. How about Elgotson? Mentioned in the beginning of the show that Elgotson flew back to Sweden. His wife's given birth yesterday morning to a baby girl. He must be home sweating, watching his team play, hoping that they'll pull it through. If they do, it'll be the first gold medal for Sweden in Olympic play. Referee Hearn is set, and the Canadians move into the faceoff circle with Ned Ved against Forsberg. That's tipped back, and the Canadians need to start stringing those passes together. The Swedes looked a lot sharper in the first period, but still 40 minutes of hockey. should say 40 minutes of regular time remaining. Because if it's tied at the end of three periods, it goes into a 10-minute overtime, then a shootout. We've already seen that happen once in this competition. Nedved has words with the officials out there. And this one gets underway again. Cat back onto the Canadian D with Astley. 129 on the power play. Astley throws that over to Wawrinka who gets it up on the wing. The Canadians quickly fire it in. Salo gets out. Tips it away from Stillman. Stillman won't be happy with that. Canada, Contos taken out of the play. Korea tries to drop it to Contos, but Korea is smothered by Johansson. The Swedes with Bergfist. Spending a little time on the puck before he shoots it down. Wawrinka with Forsberg on his back. And Canada, Nedved. The Canadians looking a little sloppy on the side, the far side rather, as Korea goes up against Johnson. And Thomas Janssen shoots it all the way down the ice. Canada struggled to set it up in the Swedish zone on this power play. Nedved with 39 seconds. Nedved gets away from Janssen on the right side now. Nedved with a burst of speed. The backhand shot. Pushed all the way back to the blue. And the Canadians unable to hold it with Nedved trying to trap it. Mayer couldn't hold it on the blue. Canadians need to get it in and set it up. The Swedes are forcing them in the corner and along the boards. They maybe need to work something into the slot or get a shot off from the point. One way or the other, they've got to try and do something. Mayer to Johnson. Nine seconds on the power play. That flips over into the Canadian bench, and Tom Rennie puts that upstairs. Spectator picks up a souvenir. Once again, they try to skate the puck into the zone. Johnson hitting the blue line. They've got to dump it, get a couple of guys going forward. They had a step, had a steam going. Rennie takes a quick look at the clock. Seven seconds remaining on this power play. Johnson in neutralized territory. Waugh gets the tip. Johansson throws it deep. That's the end of the penalty. Shelberg comes back on the ice. The Swedes are back at full strength. 145 gone on the period. Johnson, rink wide pass, and here come the Canadians. Long clearance in is deflected away at the defense. And Canada have to go deep in their own zone. Astley, Johnson breaking up the middle. Yulene picks this one up. Yulene in neutralized territory, throws it into the circle. And the Swedes with Svensson. Little tip right up onto the wing. A chance now as Yulene goes in. Yulene got it from Naslin. Yulene, good move to get away from Meyer. Wah. Throws it up on the wing, and that comes back to Svensson. Close checking. Both teams staying right on it. Canada with Wah trying to break up on the left side, but he couldn't get to that. Wah gets back, moves right in front of his own net. Naslin is there. Naslin has Yulene in front of the shot. Hirsch makes a save, and Hirsch is smothered on the plate. Swedes getting in there quickly. Yulene is 
manhandled around the front of the Canadian goal. You'd say that Yulene is smothered on the play as Hirsch went down. Hirsch slow getting up. Could have something to do with the shot that he took on the leg right in the beginning of the warm-ups. Careless play, Waugh trying to do it all. That's not going to work with guys on the ice like Mats Naslin. Naslin lays it over Yulene, is all by himself. Harlock coming in late. Hirsch saved the day for the Canadians on that one. Hirsch also got a stick in the helmet. As the Canadian went right over top of him, the left foot at the side of the mask. Hirsch seems to be all right. 2.40 gone on the second period. 1-0 to score. Johnson, Bergfist. Johnson in the corner along with Bergfist and the Canadians getting the sticks up high. That comes all the way back. Stillman lets the shot go and that trickles by the far side of the net and the Canadians under pressure here as that bubbles to the far side. Norris tries to get it out to Joseph. The pass is a long one that goes all the way down the ice. Stillman is there for Sweden. Stillman quickly up on the wing. Canada back with Norris. Norris unable to get away from Janssen. A giveaway there. Shot. Hirsch makes the save. Dekel moved right in. And this is the second shift for Dekel out there. And he's looking sharp. This is their fourth line. They don't see a lot of action. All the teams in the competition have come here with four lines. But they usually go with three. And I guess with the Slovakians at times they were just using two. But... Uh, the Canadians and the Swedes primarily use three out of the four, but there's one of the fourth line members getting right into the thick of it. Another careless pass by the Canadians on the breakout. Schlegel. Joseph. Joseph. Unable to connect on that second pass. Schlegel just tips it right to the Swedes, and the Canadians are giving the puck away out there. Forsberg. Behind the net, a bouncing puck, and Joseph goes after that. Svensson puts it right back in, and Forsberg unable to pick it up from the hash marks. The Canadians move it out over their own blue line. That goes into center ice territory. Joseph is there. Joseph gets the shot, and Salo easily steers that into the corner. Four minutes gone on the second period. Canada getting it back. Harlock, the wrist shot, the deflection. Joseph moved in behind the goaltender. Hansen gets it right out, and the Swedes are back on the attack. Forsberg slams on the brakes. The shot. Hirsch is out of his net. Hirsch is doing a great job cutting down the angles out there. The Swedes are hungry for rebounds, and the Canadians are really sitting them down in a hurry. Janssen having a go now with Lushko. Janssen's seen it all and done it all before. Mushko and Janssen both going to the penalty box, being assisted by players from their teams. Both unsportsmanlike conduct. Janssen wants to finish this. Mushko and Janssen still refusing to go into the penalty box. and Janssen both given two minutes for unsportsmanlike conduct. It all started with Forsberg putting a couple of nice moves on Harlock. Forsberg lets it go. Hirsch makes the save and then it all happens after the whistle was blown. Well, the faceoff at 419. The Canadians bring it in their own zone. Now they start it up. Korea breaks manhandled a little by Svensson as Johansson picks it up. Yulin leaves that behind the net and the Swedes Breaking quickly, Svensson. Svensson is dumped in neutralized territory, but that was a major dive. The Canadians back on the attack, the shot. Upstairs, bounces off the plexi. The puck is left there for Korea. Johnson just couldn't get the stick on it. Big hit just inside the line. One on one here, two on one now as Yulin comes in. That went upstairs and both teams 
Coming close here in the second period. This one is opening up. Canada with Korea. Korea's got the speed. Yulin stays on him. Johansson is there to the side of the net with Johnson. Johnson, Wawrinka has moved up the shot right on the target and Salo makes the save. And Svensson slows it right down and puts it into neutralized territory. Yulin, the second bite of the cherry, taken off him again. Naslin is there, drops it all the way back onto the D. Roley now gets a check off the play by Nedved and Canada with a couple of good opportunities and then the Swedes come back quickly on the counter. Lude unable to stop that at the blue and here come the Canadians. Schreiber, Schreiber drops it back. Wawrinka, Schreiber behind the net just couldn't pick up the loose puck. Lude slams on the brakes and drops it back and Rolene puts it to the far side of the rink. Neutralized territory, the Swedes moving up quickly. A little tap off the Lube. Lube has got so many moves, but that wasn't one of them. Schlegel goes back, and Hurst slows it down with just six seconds on the penalties out there. The Canadians looking a lot better. Coming in is Janssen. Janssen a shot. Hurst, great save. Janssen had just come out of the penalty box. The timing was perfect. Straight from the penalty box, straight at Corey Hirsch. A great save made by Corey Hirsch. He'll go for a little skate and have a thought about that one. Pass is cut off by Hansen. The Canadian forwards were off to the races. The Swedes kept the pressure on. Janssen goes right in, puts it on the forehand. Hirsch just goes with him nicely and comes up with the save. Just when I say the Canadians are going through a good spell, they give the puck away right at the blue line and set up Janssen. Hirsch has been solid. 6.25 gone on the second period. Still a 1-0 scoreline out there. Janssen against Savage. That bounces beyond Svensson. Svensson backhands that up to the top of the circle. And the Swedes with Naslin moving up quickly. Naslin off the boards nicely. Goes into the corner. Canada back in a hurry. Erickson is pushed by Lobson. That's eventually frozen along the boards and we'll have another face-off. Again, the Canadians having words for the linesman and the referee. The crowd getting their own opinions in there. Two goals and two assists for Brian Savage. Rumored to be off to the Montreal organization after these Olympic Games are over. Guy with a great career ahead of him. From the face-off, Janssen got it back and the shot came from DeKel. Svensson couldn't get a handle on that, and Johansson is being chased. That goes all the way down the ice. Icing is the call. Excellent crowd here in Hacken Hall for this final game. As I said, the 46th game of the competition. And... Uh, I think we've been around for about 45 of them. Just about. It doesn't show though. From behind the face, uh, behind the uh, red line. Joseph puts it up on the boards. Parks with Lushko. Parks. Forsberg steals that and takes a high chop. Lushko goes in hard on the far side. Meyer right in front of the net with his shot. The Canadians pepper it right back in. Janssen doing a lot of interference right behind the goal. And the Canadians with this feisty line. Lushko out there with Joseph. These guys are not big, but they're certainly tough. Parks, who plays his hockey in Sweden, muscles along the boards. And the Swedes, for once, were losing the battle of the bodies out there. Forsberg complaining to referee Hearn that he's being molested. He was... Hit in the side of the head by Lushko. Well, if he thinks he's going to go to Quebec and play hockey, he better get used to that. Lushko really throwing his weight around. Forsberg stood up twice on that shift. Strong kid, though. He keeps his head up nicely. Forsberg goes to the bench for a rest. Swedes and the Canadians both changing things up. Face off in the Swedish zone. Seven minutes, 30 seconds gone on the period. Johnson goes in for Canada. And the Canadians 
Uh, looking to tie this one up. These officials can be very pedantic on the face-off. Naslin goes in to take over against Johnson. A lot of time taken on the face-off. Rolene, or Yulene rather, gets it back. Contos is dumped. Johnson. Johnson with the long clearance and that deflects over the boards. The flow has been taken out of this one with a couple of whistles. And we're going to have another face-off on the plate. I don't know if Coach Tom Rennie is doing it deliberately, but he keeps Waranka on the ice, number five, opposite number five for Sweden, Yulin. When he's going down that wing, he's big, he's strong, and he's very quick. And of the Canadian defensemen, Waranka is probably the quickest one. He's the guy that can take the, take the angle away from him and not allow Yulin to get outside. Waranka goes up against Yulin. The shot right on the target. Hirsch is there. Waranka gets that away from Rudmark. To the far side, Contos takes a hit but gets it out of the zone. Janssen pops it into neutralized territory. The Canadians can't bring it over the line. Yulene, Yulene on the left side. Hirsch is there with the save, the slap shot. He is contained by Corey Hirsch. Yulene all over the ice. This time he's down the left wing. Seven goals and one assist. He's tied for the lead with Lube for Swedish goal scorers, each with eight points. Hornskog gets set for this one. Nedved for Canada. That goes over to Astley. Astley puts it behind his own goal. The Canadians still have not looked that sharp and it's partly due to the Swedish defensive style, Lube takes Schlegel out of the play. That comes back to the blue line, tapped in wide of the target. Lube in the corner. Astley goes up against Lube. Shelberg takes over in the corner. Shelberg with Schlegel on him. A little push along the boards, and Nedved gives it away. Some terrible passing out there from Canada. Sweden continue to apply the pressure. Schlegel up on the left wing. That goes all the way down the ice. Stillman for Sweden. Stillman still hanging on as Unskog gets back and Stillman picks it up. His pass is batted down by the Canadians. Schreiber along the boards, right at the blue line. Shelburne over to the far side. Canada now coming in. A chance right in front for Waugh. Pass over by Meyer. Shot from Nedbed. And that deflected high. Nedved was backing into the slot and let the shot go. That one rose in a hurry. Hearn again pointing to somebody who he wants to go to the penalty box. There were a couple of hacks around the front of the goal. Slashing is the call. Lube goes to the point. Nedved lets the shot go quickly. That one goes right off the mask of Sunlo Salo, rather. Schreiber goes to the box for slashing at 9-11. Power play situation for the Swedes out there, and they scored on the power play in the first period. Jonsson puts it up on the wing to Lude. Lude. Drops it back to Jonsson. Kenny Jonsson and Thomas Jonsson. Kenny Jonsson to Lube. Jonsson with Lushko staying out there. The shot, Bergfist was right in the way of that. The Canadians with a terrible clearance again. Forsberg drops it back. Thomas Jonsson to Forsberg. Back to Janssen, and he can't control that. That bounces away, and the Swedes have to come out of the zone. Forsberg brings it back quickly on the right side. Parks stays with him. Parks roughing it up in the corner, and Lube is back there to pick up the puck. Gives it to Bergfist. Back to Janssen. Bergfist moves in now. The Canadians hang on to that box, and they don't allow the Swedes to get the shot away. Forsberg gets the shot in, and that's batted down. Canada... Doing a good job at this stage of killing this one off. Janssen comes in hard, just to the hash marks. The Canadians with a big chop out there. Forsberg moves back to the blue line. 
Kenny Johnson with Lushko still on him. All the way back behind the goal. Bergfist gets it to Lube. Lube back to Janssen. Lube gets it again. Janssen the one-timer. And that bounces away from Forsberg who takes a hit. But Bergfist takes over. 29 seconds on the power play. A slow build-up. Another shot comes in from Janssen. Lube goes in to collect the loose puck in the corner. Still with Lube. Looking for the given goal. That doesn't happen. Good stuff from Forsberg. Bergfist is right out front. Lube is in there. Back to Janssen again. And the Swedes with eight seconds on the power play. Another big shot comes booming in. And this time it gets right back to Janssen and trickles out over the blue. The Canadians have killed off the penalty. Lorenka unable to keep it out. And the Swedes almost bring it right back in front with Forsberg doing a good job. Well, the, almost the entire two minutes was in the Canadian zone, but there weren't that many shots right on the target. The Swedes certainly controlled the puck nicely, but it's good to give the kid, number 19, Johnson, experience on the power play, but the coaching staff will probably have a word with him about hitting the net when he gets the shots off. He whistled two or three of them wide of the goal. Lou Bergfist and Forsberg doing a lot of good work and feeding him two or three times. Savage and Rudmark, and Rudmark is being told to get out of the circle. Naslin. Naslin tried to trip Savage as he turned his back on him. And the Canadians with Schlegel. Schlegel gets it in. Salo's there. Norris goes in hard. Canada with Korea. Korea taken out of the play by Johansson. Norris tried to bring it out front. Korea kicks it along the boards. You can see the size of Johansson as he just drops Korea. And we have a whistle on the play. And Johansson is not happy with that one. He was manhandling Korea out there. Burn went right over to him and had words. Johansson better be careful because he shot the puck after the whistle as well. Dive or no dive, he's got two minutes, he can't change that. He's only going to make it worse for himself by slamming his stick and shooting the puck after the whistle. He might better calm down. Johansson is 6'1", 190, 195 pounds, and Korea is 5'9". Listed at 6'1", he looks more like he's about 6'5 on the ice. Well, you add the height of his skates, his helmet, and... Uh, People don't know how tall Korea really is. He's got 5'8", 5 5'9", 5 and 5'10", next to his name. In the face-off, that comes back to the blue. Johnson is back out there on the points as the Canadians set it up now. Along the blue line, Warenka tries to one-time it into Nedved. Johnson keeps it in nicely. Nedved gets it back to Johnson, and he can't control that. The Canadians bring it out of the zone. A long pass in. Bouncing puck, and Warenka throws it to an open wing. Johnson fires it right back in, and Canada move in quickly with Contos. Nedved, Contos, back to the blue line. The shot, Warenka! Johnson stops it right along the boards, taps it in, and Canada with Contos moving in front. Nedved. Terrible pass again as the Canadians have to come out of the zone. Warenka throws it to the far side, and Korea was trapped it offside, and boy, things are not going well for Canada. To be fair to both teams, we saw a pass bounce over Thomas Janssen's stick when the Swedes had the power play. This time the pass wasn't great, you're exactly right about that, but that puck is bouncing like mad. We've seen this, this ice really seems to get chopped up quickly, there's a lot of snow out there. thousand two hundred and forty five people are here to see this one that's the official attendance I have a feeling there are one or two more than that less than a minute on the power play the Canadians coming up quickly Johnson forced Norris wide on that the Canadians pick it up behind his own Lushko was hit Meyer at the blue line circles and hangs on to the puck Savage Savage moves out moves in Savage takes the shot 
And Lusko was waiting. Lusko and Janssen meet face to face yet again. Swedes just taking the Canadian bodies around the front of the goal, standing up or not standing up. Those shots are hard to handle for a goaltender. It's drilled at Salo by Savage, and he has a, a battle to try and hold on to it after it hits him in the chest. Good work by the Swedish defenders out there as they each grab a man from the faceoff. Savage. And again, we see the centermen, Savage and Forsberg, being told to get out. I bite my tongue every time I watch these international officials waste time on the faceoffs. Norris, Meyer, back to Meyer. Meyer takes the shot. Bergfist with 28 seconds. That comes back to the blue, and the Canadians right along the blue line. Norris goes for a skate. Norris drops it back to Mayer. Bergfist is all over him. Mayer up on the wing. Lushko. Lushko with space. Oh, one-timer from Savage. And Salo got a piece of it. Nine seconds. And Savage is stopped in his tracks by Hearn. Hooking the call. Savage pulling his man down after he got a nice shot off for himself. A good pad save by Salo. And Brian Savage takes a two-minute penalty. Good work by the Canadians moving the puck around. Lushko, a one-timer for Savage. That had the corner written all over it. Nine seconds left on the penalty to Johansson, and the Swedes are going to have a power play. 13-37, the time of the hooking penalty for Savage. And Johansson gets set to jump back on the ice. Just nine seconds is... You said Bobes, and it's power play the other way. The Canadians were unable to capitalize. Here comes Johnson. Johnson shoots, and another great save by Salo. Four seconds now. The Swedes are back at full strength. Naslin goes for a skate. Johansson gets back on the ice, and here comes Naslin. Little drop pass. Svensson taps it up. And the Swedes through neutralized territory. Ridmark. Rudmark up to Naslin. Naslin off the boards. Yulene. Big shot comes in. Hirsch is there. Rudmark was waiting out front. Svensson got a piece of that. 125 on the power play. Johansson. As the clock ticks down here in the second period, the Swedes cling to that one goal lead, but this game is starting to open up. Norris traps that bobbling puck and shoots it down the ice. Naslin for Sweden gets deep. Naslin, one minute now on the power play, is forced to drop that off. Forsberg, coming up, gets away from Norris, but can't get away from Joseph. Sweden, with Svensson shooting that in. Hirsch slowed it down just a little. Norris is there. Lube moves in quickly with Forsberg. Three Swedes behind that net. Forsberg has Bergfist back there, too. A long pass. Lube is there. We've seen this somewhere before. The shot comes in. Forsberg had a wide open net. Warenka went down. Warenka goes down again. 25 seconds on the power play. That comes back to Janssen. And Janssen can't control it, but it goes back to Lube. Lube has Swens Svensson rather, back at the blue line. One-timer comes in. Hirsch is there. Loose puck. Forsberg right by the far post. Schlegel gets it and eventually gets it down the ice with just three seconds on the power play. The Swedes applying all sorts of pressure, unable to put the puck in the net. Corey Hirsch coming up big. Savage is back on the ice. The crowd loving every minute of it. Another great power play set up by the Swedes, but they can't score on it. This game really has picked up a gear. Here comes Savage. Savage down on the left wing, waits for support. Savage right in front. Salo gets the tip, and the Swedes come up with that. Four minutes remaining on the period. Coming back strong on the right side. Shot comes in. Hirsch makes the save. The rebound comes out, and the Canadians with Savage still out there. He's been on a, a long shift, a couple of long trips up and down the ice. Korea is taken off the plate. That's trapped by Savage, but just momentarily, Dekel. Brings his man down. Harlock gets it out of the zone. 
And the Swedes with a player offside, but what he was trying to do was get over the bench. And he happened to choose the wrong part of the bench to try to get over. <laughs> he might better have taken that one extra stride and gotten out over the blue line. It looked a bit awkward. Forsberg with a great opportunity. Hirsch, to his credit, had held his ground. He moved right over to that side of the net very quickly. Took most of the goal away from Forsberg. Another play made right after that. Waranka coming up with a big save. Face-off outside the Canadian zone with Savage and Ornskog. Ornskog to Johansson. Roger Johansson. Up on the right wing. Ornskog loses out in the corner to Warenka. Contos is back there along with Loveson. Loveson. His pass intended for Johnson doesn't work. And Shelberg just throws it right back in. The Canadians seem to be bunching on the wings. Warenka again. A high flip into neutralized territory. That was always going to be batted down. Svensson lays it off. A backhander, good save. Again, Hirsch comes up big for Canada. Contos has Warenka. Contos to the far side. The Canadians shooting from all angles. That deflects over to this side of the rink in Canada. Shooting it in. Korea goes in. Tries to get a stick on it. Slams on the brakes and puts it in back to Contos. Back to Korea. Ornskog takes out Korea, but Korea hangs on to the puck. Harlock goes in and runs interference. The shot comes in. Big save. Contos backhander. Loose puck right in front. And Contos with Johansson on top of him was smothering the puck. And Hearn again doesn't like what he sees out there. The Canadians trying to do something different to break the Swedes down. Excellent man-to-man -man coverage by the Swedes. Two defense low. The first forward back has got his man. This time Harlock picks the Swedish player out. Ornskog was trying to cover Korea. Korea had that opening to get a shot away. It went to the goal, and then it's just how hungry are the Canadians. They're battling and fighting for the rebound. Kantos is in there. Another player is pulled down. The Swedes go to the penalty box. Holding the call on Svensson at 17.38. Roger Johansson at the same time had tripped up Contos and he was complaining. The Canadians need to do more of that. Exactly what Harlock did. Just pick the player out and let the forward have a couple of extra strides because the Swedes are just like glue to the Canadians when they're in their own end of the ice. 17.38 gone. On the second period, still a 1-0 scoreline. Nedved gets that back to the blue. The Canadians on the power play. Forsberg against Waugh. And Waugh now against Janssen. Another face-off as that goes over into the Canadian bench. And the indication from the Swedes is that we want it outside the zone. Good look at Brad Waranka. This guy's been very impressive. He was a finalist in the 1991 season for the Hobie Baker Award. He played his hockey at Northern Michigan. He hasn't quite settled into Edmonton yet. He came over here to play in the Olympic Games to try and get his act together and go back and prove himself in the NHL. The Hobie Baker Award, for those of you who don't know, is given to the best American college player. And Korea won that last year, and he was the... Or is the only freshman that's first year student to do that 132 remaining on the power play Svensson sitting for holding Warenka gets it up to Nedved Nedved tries to stick handle through the Swedes can't get it out Schreiber in the corner taps it back to the blue the shot comes in deflection right in front Nedved goes over and Bergfist gets there first Schreiber tries to close it down and the Swedes shoot it all the way down the ice. Hurst quickly up. Warenka stick handles through neutralized territory. Good move by Warenka, but Ornskog is there to pick up the loose puck and dump it. Swedes forcing right at the blue line. Earlier, Bergfist did a good job of dropping back from the front of his box position, helping out. Astley over to Warenka. Warenka puts it up on the wing. The Canadians. The long clearance is always going to be an icing call. Savage on the wrong side of the red line. That's the kind of thing that will take the sting out of your power plate. 
Well, the players were changing on the move. I think that just for a split second, Savage forgot what he was doing. Canadians will have to try it again. The faceoff will be in their territory, though. A lot of time left on this game. There's still only one goal in it. One minute, four seconds on the period. 42 seconds on the penalty to Svensson. Ornskog and Parks. That comes back onto the Canadians. Stick, and here come the Canadians up the left side, breaking through middle. Harlock gets it over to Lushko. Lushko gives it away, and Canadians still, every once in a while, forget where they are out there. Joseph back behind the net. The Swedes give it right back to the Canadians. Parks gets it away from Lube. Parks gets a return pass back to the blue line. Canada running out of time on the period. Parks tries to get it out front. Johansson got the stick on it. Joseph back to the blue line. Harlock the shot is upstairs. Parks without a stick. And now Parks picks it up. Joseph has it. The Swedes are back at full strength and the Canadians still trying to get that shot on goal before the end of the period. 12 seconds. Lushko goes in. Stillman takes him heavily into the boards. Zornskog is out there muscling now. Back to the blue. Lovskin. Lovskin rather can't keep it in and Harlock gets back. There goes the buzzer to end the second period of play. No scoring in this period, but both teams having several opportunities. Both teams also having three power play opportunities. Neither one able to put anything behind the opposing goalie. We're seeing some outstanding goaltending from Salo and Hirsch. The only goal came in the first period from Janssen on a power play. And that one is looking mighty big right now. The Swedes will take a break, as will the Canadians, and will go into the third and final period. As I said before, if it's tied, we go into sudden death overtime. If it's still tied, we go into a shootout. The Canadians are looking for their sixth gold medal, unless you count, of course, that gold medal they won in 1920 in the Summer Olympics in Antwerp, Belgium, but it's officially number six. They have three silver and two bronze, and the Swedes are looking for their first gold. They have two silver and four bronze. Folks, before we went into this final, you picked the Swedes. Do you still stay with them? I knew that was going to come to that. Yes, I am staying with the Swedes. I know that I'm going to get beaten up badly when I get back to Great Britain. But I am sticking with the Swedes. I picked them from the beginning, and I'm not changing my decision. How about one from you? Well, I, I was going to say I'm going to stay with the Finns, but they've already won a medal. They picked up bronze. I still think the Finns were the top team in the competition. The way they played hockey, they, they really did entertain a lot of people. But uh, I think I have to favor the Swedes, too. They are looking strong out there, but the Canadians have a lot of youngsters. They have a lot of talent, and Tom Rennie is an excellent coach. He can motivate this team. Still 20 minutes of hockey out there. Anything can happen. So stay with us. We're going to have uh, more Olympic highlights coming up between the periods. And we're going to take a break now, and we'll come back with more action from the third and final period in a moment. Very even. The second period did favor the Swedes, though. 16 to 6, they outshot the Canadians. Two period total of 22 13 favoring the Swedes. After the Canadians had outshot the Swedes by one shot in the first period. It's anybody's game, though, and when the puck starts bouncing around, it's just going to be critical to pick up a body, and a good bounce for one team or the other could be in the gold medal. The Canadians struggled in the first period to really get anything going, but they seem to be able to find more space out there in the second. The game opened up for a while. It was still tough, and it has been right from the beginning. Along the boards and behind the net, both teams are just Velcroing themselves to each other. They're not allowing the other side to have any room. Once the play does come out of the zone, we are seeing some good passes, and both sides have got some speedy forwards. Coming into this game, the Canadians had scored 24 goals and conceded 16. The Swedes with 34 and 16 against. 
So fairly even there, the Swedes picking up five extra goals, but conceding the same number. Goaltenders are both very hot this afternoon. Hirsch has had several, several rather point-blank shots that he's had to contend with, and the Canadians really need to pop something quick out there. If the Swedes get another goal, this one could be all over. It's going to be critical to stay out of the box, stay fired up, but the Canadians don't need to panic. That's the one thing they don't want to do. They've got 20 minutes. They don't want to hit the panic button and force themselves into making errors. Tommy Salo and Corey Hirsch go through their paces out there. As we get set for this third and final period live on Eurosport. It's been a great two weeks, 16 days to be exact, tournament. And I think everyone watching in the stadiums and at home really has to be pleased with what they've seen. Mayer gets that on the wing and pops it over. The Canadians started out from their own zone. Mayer, the return pass, gives it away. Svensson is deep. Johansson. Joseph goes after his man, and the Canadians bring it in with a long shot wide of the target. That's trapped. Parks tries to throw it in front. Johansson keeps that away from Parks, and Johansson slows it down behind his own goal. Thomas Johnson working with Kenny Johnson out there, and the Swedes take a long time to get this one up. Svensson is now on the ice. Svensson chops it in. Svensson changed hands. He went from left to right on that. Hirsch came up with the save, and the Canadians now start up quickly. Joseph hits the blue and sees four yellow shirts in front of him, so just flips it in. The Swedes will bring it right back out. Drop pass. Johansson up on the wing as a two-liner. We're going to go right back to that shot by Svensson. That's something that you used to see out of guys like Ivan Cornwayer and people like that. Gordy Howe to shoot both ways. Svensson, a left-handed shot, went over the blue line and took the slap shot right-handed. Change of personnel for both teams out there as this third period settles down. Faceoff just beyond the top of the circle. Johnson in there for Canada. He's been a good line with Johnson and Contos. Contos got to stick to it. Johansson recovers quickly and taps it over. Svensson pops it out in the slot area. And the Swedes now with Woodmark. Shot saved by Hirsch. Picked up by Johnson. Johnson breaking down the left wing. The Canadians over the line. Right in front is Contos. And he's tied up by Svensson as that bounces right into the path of Naslin. Naslin with Woodmark. Good move by Naslin. Naslin throws it back. Right onto the doorstep. Corey Hirsch has no problems with that. Warenka lifts it up on the wing. And this, the Canadians are closed down. The whistle blows, and the Canadians, when they move along that board in neutralized territory, do not go very far. The Swedes are just playing them off toward the boards and then trapping them out. One forward always staying high, the other guys just pick men up. It's nice to watch. That allows the defenseman the opportunity to step up as well. Canadians did a good job of breaking the Finns down. The Finns played the same game for a while, but Canada, once they got on track, the Finns were just all over the place. Boyskov got it back. Lube gives it to the Canadians, and Astley pops it in. Stillman is there. Stillman. Boyskov back to Stillman. A slow, deliberate buildup. Roger Hansen. Hansen gets round Astley. Hansen has Lube out front. Hansen is still on the puck. Hansen is being pushed away and Nedved gets back in there. A big hook by Astley and Lube comes in to help out. Hansen and Lube. Astley giving Lube a rough ride and the Canadians work it up out over the blue line. Some good stuff from Canada. Schlegel now hits the blue line. Offside is the call.
Canadians finding it difficult to get out of their zone. They finally did just by pure muscle. Lou. Lou goes to the bench for a rest. That line is so dangerous. Two twenty nine gone on the third period as the official finally drops the puck. Johnson puts it over. Thomas Johnson leaving it for Jorgen Johnson. Three Johnsons out on the ice now. Jorgen Johnson, good move. Perhaps one too many by number 20. And the Canadians back quickly. Coming up is Korea. Korea taken out of the play by Kenny Johnson at the last moment. Savage wants it in the corner and gets it. Savage with Norris. Norris helps with a little pick from Savage. And the deflection, another whistle on the plate. It's an interesting combination on the defense. Thomas Janssen, 33 years old. Kenny Janssen, 19 years old. And you can see the skill and the quickness that this young Kenny Janssen has for a guy his size. He's only 19 years old, and he played Korea right out of the play. Swedes grow big, that's for sure. against Forsberg. That comes to Forsberg who gives it to Hansen. That bounces over his stick. Harlock back to the blue. Pass up on the wing to Lushko. Goes all the way down. Lushko hammers Forsberg and both of them bounce. Loose puck in front and that's tipped wide of the goal as Sala went down. Parks goes after Hansen. Hansen on the boards with Bergfist and Parks Lushko Mayer out there can't slow down that puck. Hansen picks it up. Lushko goes back against Hansen. It's getting physical out there. The Canadians try to slow down the Swedes with the muscle. Svensson, a little tap through to Forsberg, and the Canadians break it up. Look at the determination along the boards from Forsberg and Hansen and Svensson. Pass up the middle. The Canadians can't hang on to it. Forsberg, so strong on the puck. Gives it off to Bergfist. Bergfist against Harlock and Bergfist falls and the puck is smothered underneath. Rudmark just taps it along the hash marks. Mayer whistles it down the ice. Icing the call, the crowd reacting. Momentarily, both teams forgot about the puck. It was body for body. And the puck was just laying there for a few seconds. Nobody even made a move toward it. Both sets of supporters trying to scream for penalties against the opposition. One nil the score. The Swedes clinging to that one goal lead here in the third period. 4-12 gone on the period and it's uh, a face-off deep in the Canadian zone. Johnson against Rudmark. Johnson gets it back, and the Canadians with Lovson hit by Yulin. A little tip along the boards. Rudmark is there. Yulin couldn't trap it, and the Canadians in neutralized territory. Contos drops it back. The Canadians working over that blue line with Johnson running out of places to go. Stillman. Contos goes after him. Stillman taps it along the boards, and the Swedes now breaking quickly. Naslin. Breaking in the center, a good drop pass, a shot right of the target. Yulin got a piece of it. Contos got it out of the zone, some holding of the stick on the far side of the rink. That was Naslin's stick that was grabbed. Referee letting that one go. Stillman dropped that off, and the Swedes with Rudmark. Rudmark shot, and Hirsch makes the save. Rudmark puts it behind the goal. Yulin with a little over five minutes gone. Another shot comes in. And again, it deflects high. The Swedes have picked it up a gear. Moving the puck very quickly back to the point. The Canadians momentarily out of position, but sliding into the play and getting a piece of the shot before it got to Corey Hirsch. Off just inside the Canadian zone with Ornskog against Nedved. And again, the Canadians win it. Astley. Schlegel. 
Rude goes in deep and then gets back. Schreiber breaks right up the middle of the Canadians. You can see the pressure coming early from the Swedes. Wah races into the corner. Janssen slams on the brakes and Wah keeps skating. Janssen, a loop wide pass and the Swedes looking fairly comfortable out there for the moment anyway. Svensson, with a lot of time, he waits for the Canadians to come in a little and brings it up slowly. A long pass goes the distance. And we'll have another face-off, and this time it'll be in Swedish territory. A pair of Janssens on the point once again for the Swedes. Thomas and Kenny. Kenny Janssens passed too far, and the Swedes will have to try again. Waugh going to the bench with Nedved. Both teams getting fresh lines out there. Off the Canadian defenseman Warenka couldn't keep that in. Driven up along the board, neutralized territory. Korea unable to slow that down. Naslin moves over. Svensson has the puck, and the Swedes are taking a long time to bring it out. Janssen now drops it back to Svensson. Good move in his own zone. Good pass up on the wing. Janssen right in front. The Kell was there, and the Canadians break quickly. Savage is dumped, and the Swedes continue with the play. Janssen, through neutral ice. Janssen, not the blue line. The shot is grabbed by Hirsch as Lovson ties his man up. There's no real steam on it. Eriksson, Janssen, and Dakel, the fourth line for the Swedes. Anytime they have had a shift, the idea behind it is probably to give guys like Mats Naslin a rest. Hack and Lube and the players that have seen a lot of ice, but they've had a couple of close calls for themselves. They really do apply good offensive pressure. Naslin in his third Olympics, and uh, rumor has it that he wants to be a hockey analyst, TV analyst, that is, after he retires. 6.38. Gone on the period as the Canadians move it in offside. Parks getting over in a hurry. with a couple of games with the New York Islanders. Plays his hockey in Sweden, so he knows all about these guys. And the face-off. Canadians just flip it in. Stillman. Stillman on the backhand and gloved down a bouncing puck. Rolin got a for a moment, and the Canadians give it right back to the Swedes. Hansen drops it and breaks up onto the right side. 1-0 still the score is Forsberg. Good move by Forsberg. Forsberg now at the red line, coming up to the blue line. Forsberg carries on, takes a high hit from Meyer, and the Canadians have the puck. The Canadians are not panicking, but they know that the clock is ticking down out there. They're not getting the shots on Salo that they need. Johnson pulls it out of the zone. The Swedes break it down the left side. Big hit on Bergfist. Schlegel providing the muscle, and now he goes up against Hansen. Hansen just kicks that along to Bergfist. Bergfist behind the net. Astley drags him down. Schlegel is there. Tips it up along the boards, only as far as the blue. The Canadians under pressure now. A shot on goal bounces out, and Parks unable to get it out of the zone. Tip right back in the tip. Hansen was right there and got the tip just wide of the net. Canada have to resort to dumping it down the ice to take the pressure off. Janssen feeds it up to Blue. That's fed right up to the red. Orenskog, or Widmark rather, gets it around the boards in Canada trying to get a fresh set of legs out there. Yulene muscled off the play. Hirsch gives it to Johnson. Johnson has got the speed. Good move by Johnson. Johnson has got Contos. Johnson takes the shot. Salo gloves it down. Salo has not been tested that many times in this period. Greg Johnson getting that one away nicely. A good individual effort. Outskating the Swedes coming out of his own zone. Good little move. Walks over the blue line. The Swedes actually backing off the blue line for once. We haven't seen that many times in this game. 
Letting it go, Salo coming up with a nice save. Only 15 saves in the match. Gone on the third period as the faceoff is in Swedish territory. And Woodmark and Johnson are being told to get out. And this certainly takes the steam out of the game. Naslin goes in. I wish they'd just drop that puck. Contos is there too. Loose puck and the Canadians move in quickly. But Svensson grabs it ahead of Schreiber. Or Johnson, rather, and the Canadians have to go back to their own blue. Warenka, pass right up the middle is a good one. Korea off the backboards to the far side. Lubson goes in. Lubson with lube on him. Contos is there. Naslin. Naslin breaks. Gives it to lube. Shot comes in. Hirsch is there. Rebound as it's kicked over to the near side. The Canadians now pick it up and move forward. Johnson, Johnson, Contos, right in there, Salo says I didn't see it, it's all tied up. Canadians celebrate, they finally leveled the score. Good action from Canada, it wasn't a perfectly smooth play but it worked, Contos doing the job by holding the puck into the zone, directs it toward the net couple of people fighting for it. Korea is right there around the front of the goal. Johnson, Contos looking for Korea. Salo is beaten. And the Canadians have tied the score. Korea momentarily has been given credit with, for the goal. Johnson for the assist. The referee taking his time on the call. As it stands, it should be Paul Korea from Johnson. And Contos also should have an assist on that goal. It's all tied up. Whether they give the goal to Korea or not. And what a finish we're building for here. The Canadians were struggling with quality shots and finally it's a bit of a strange shot that goes in on Salo. And it's all tied up. Canada coming back. Nedved taken off the puck by Forsberg, or Hansen rather. Nedved. Janssen. It's slowly tipped in behind the goal. Janssen is there, and the Swedes stay behind the goal with Nedved cruising out front. 1-1 one, one scoreline. All the way back in. Janssen on the wing. Ten minutes gone on the period. Ten minutes remaining. Janssen again. Ornskog cruises out front. Mayer. Mayer in the corner. Joseph to the far side. And the Canadians now looking a little more confident as they bring it out of the zone. Mayer. A little tip forward. That goes off the skate. And Lube tries to set himself free. Brought in by Janssen. Lube is trapped. And the offside whistle goes. Hockey is a game of momentum. Both teams are still playing it tight, but what's this goal going to do for the Canadians? It's certainly got to be a confidence booster as they finally struck. The goal is in the net as Salo is beaten. Korea moving right in front of Salo gets the tip. Korea, as you can see, has three goals and four assists. Not bad for a 19-year-old. Norris is muscling along the boards and we have another whistle as Norris and Johnson are separated by the officials and the Canadians have pulled themselves right back into this final as you said folks the key was not to panic take your opportunities when they come both teams are getting plenty of opportunities Johansson Warenka Lubson taps it right back into the pack. Savage is there. No one wants to move. Johansson and the Canadians come up with it. Savage. Long pass right up the middle. That's good. Shot comes in and Salo is out of there. Salo.
Gallo coming out to take the angle away. The Canadians quick to break. Savage throwing the pass through. Korea getting a good piece of that one. Excellent goaltending as Salo came out. Face off deep in Swedish territory and the Canadians are going through a good spell now. Lusko wants something removed from the ice out there. Woodmark sets himself up for this face off. Burn hasn't had a lot to do in this period. Well, they're actually not removing something. They're filling up a hole. You get the bit of snow, a bit of water, and smooth it over with the puck. That's the way it works. A lot of support here for both teams. A lot of athletes who have finished their events in the Olympics have stayed on to watch this big final. We know that uh, the Canadian Bedard is here. And she spent some time with the Canadian team showing the Canadian team her gold medals. Stillman gets that out of the zone. 11 minutes and two seconds gone on the third period. Schlegel with Astley. Picked up behind the goal. The Canadians back to Schlegel. Parks is moving on the right side. Astley comes up. Hits the red and just pops it over. Joseph was there. And we have another whistle on the play. Parks and Joseph, a couple of grinders. Working hard, the Swedes holding the blue line. This really has turned out to be a great game. It started in the first period with, as a real close checking affair. The Canadians were unable to get going every once in a while. The Swedes would find an opening. In the second period, it opened up a little more, although there wasn't any scoring in that period. And in this third period, has opened up further still. Forsberg, long shot on Hirsch. Mayer. Johnson. Back and Mayer comes forward. Mayer, the pass right through. Goes back behind the red line. The Canadians set it up from behind the goal. Right in front, the one-timer. Salo makes the save. And the score! Two to one. Salo again says, I didn't see it. It doesn't matter whether he saw it or not, the Canadians are going crazy. They have gotten the lead now through two third period goals. One thing to get the shot off and have the other team coming at you, but the beating that Mayer just took from his own teammates is more than he's had in a long time. Great opportunity for the Canadians. The first shot comes in. Mayer steps in and drills it past Salo, who didn't see it. Again, you can see him flapping his arms at his teammates. Hey, I don't even know where the puck is. Well, this one is far from over, but right now, the Canadians are in the lead and they're looking for their first gold in 42 years. 11.43, the time of the goal, so still a lot of time on the clock, a lot of hockey to be played out there, but the Canadians have taken the lead against the powerful and number one fancy team in the tournament. Sweden now, with Svensson coming up quickly, this is going to open this game wide up. Coming up to the 12 minute mark, Svensson puts it right out front, contained by the Canadians. Tapped up on the wing, Johansson gets back, Schreiber keeps moving, Johansson bumps along the boards, Nedved moves in quickly. The Canadians still with a man trapped deep, bring it all the way back into their own zone. Law circles back, but that's tapped up. Shot in, Johansson now with a sense of urgency. A moment ago, he would have stood there for 15 seconds. Now the Swedes get it up quickly. Lude, pass up on the wing. Law is there. That hit the official, and it bounces all the way back now for the Canadians. Nedved. Nedved gets away from Yulene, gets it over the red line, and fires it in. Janssen. 
Drops it back with Korea on him. Johnson off the boards. Sweden changing on the fly. Here comes Woodmark. Woodmark picks it up. Coming up to the 13 minute mark. Seven minutes on the clock. Fired in off the boards. Mayer goes in. Yulin is there. All the way back to Janssen. Janssen pops it in the corner. Yulin being pressured by Mayer. Woodmark tries to get it going. He drops it off and the Swedes with that circling motion. That's when the shot goes in. Hirsch is there as that bounce bounces over to the near side. Johnson. Mayor Korea. Janssen. Woodmark backs up Janssen. Janssen eventually needs the help of Woodmark and Woodmark doing a great job of blocking that puck. Woodmark is still there and eventually tips it to the open wing in the corner. Canada struggling to get the puck out of the zone. Johnson put it into the corner. Yunin drops Harlock. Yunin kicking at that puck. Naslin is waiting for it behind the goal. Yunin takes a beating physically. Widmark has the puck. Widmark, the backhander. And eventually it's shot out of the zone. Canadian defense falling down in front of Hirsch, getting a piece of it. A nice play to take that off Ridmark. Svensson brought it up, but Johansson was trapped about four or five strides over the blue line as he backed in. Offside is the call. Great action from the Canadian. Salo with a big first save. He isn't able to come up with Mayer's shot on the second attempt. Mayer, the guy that just slid in front of the goal and took that puck off Ridmark. That was a close call. Less than six minutes on the game. Forsberg against Parks. Wawenka just pops it down the ice and the icing whistle blows so the Canadians will have a face off in their zone. And the pace has picked up yet another gear here as uh, the Swedes realize that they could lose the opportunity of picking up their first ever goal. Forsberg gets set for this one. Canada with a little conference as Parks moves into the face-off circle. Parks and Forsberg, good save there by Svensson, gets it over to Johansson. Johansson in the corner is grabbed and brought down. Lugson putting the bear hug on, gets away with it. The American referee keeps his arms down. The shot is deflected away. Canada trying to get out with Lugson. Bergfist kept it in. Hansen took the shot. A big chop there. Sends it sailing along the boards. And the Swedes trying to get the shot on goal, and they do. Lushko is down. He was belted right along the boards. Big collision just inside the blue line. Lushko really did get hit. Both players going for the puck. It was very innocent. Lushko trying to figure out what rink he's in right now. As the puck was trying to get its way out of the Canadian zone, Lushko went for the pokes. Benson came in. Lushko took one heck of a shot. I don't think Svensson feels very well after that one either. I bet they both wish they could do that somewhere else, but perhaps a little easier. Look at that eye. Oh, that's coming up nicely. Souvenir from the 94 Olympics. I hope he's not a vegetarian because he's going to need a steak on that one. Harlock gets it out of the zone. Johnson goes back five minutes on the period kept in by Savage Savage with a lot of time in there. No one wants to get him Savage moving in the corner He'll stay there all day unless they come and get him Savage working against Johnson Johnson puts the grab on Johnson against Savage and the Canadians just play with it along the boards Korea is pushed off the plate Hansen goes in now Forsberg Hansen breaks to the right. Forsberg comes down the left wing. Forsberg is muscled out of the play by Korea, who's about half his size. Korea goes in, steals the puck from Hansen. 
And Korea comes down on the left wing. Korea will be happy just to get it out of the zone. Spanson, who had that big hit a moment ago. Let's go to the shot. Hirsch came up with a big save. Forsberg circles and gets it right back in. Hirsch comes out and slows it down. The Canadians trying desperately to get it out of the zone. Norris tips it up. Canada trying to keep it in the Swedish zone, but it doesn't work. Less than four minutes on the period. Ornskov. Nedved goes after him. Ornskov now breaks in a neutralized territory. Move, good move. Move shot. Hit a defenseman as Wawrinka got in front of that. Janssen pinned against the boards. The Canadians keep the clock moving as Schreiber taps it along the board. Bad bounce for the Swedes. Nedved goes quickly on it. Nedved against Janssen. Nedved bangs it off to Plexi. Ornskog is there to pick it up. Fast moving finish to this game. Two to one. The Canadians leading. Pass on to the far side. Lou gets it right in front and Janssen was there and he was just right away from picking that up. Canada. Schreiber. Wah. Schreiber now moves back high as Johnson with three minutes on the game. Johnson drops it back. Woodmark checks, takes a swipe at it and gets it right back. Pushed right into the corner. The Canadians rattle that off the boards and the Swedes keep it in and try to set it up. Yulene and Naslin back to the blue line. Johnson, the one-timer comes in. Hirsch makes the save and clears it out. Canada breaking on the far side. Coming in quickly. Looking for the wraparound. That comes out front. And Yulene is there to pick it up. Korea jumps at the far end of the rink as he got that out front. Yulene lets the shot go and that goes off the plexi. Yulene carries on. Some good stuff from him as he gets it back to the blue. Another shot comes in. Naslin was crowding right in front. Johansson backhands it. Naslin is there. Wawrinka ties him up. Naslin comes free. Works his way out front and he's dragged down. The Canadians come forward. The whistle blows. Oh, that's a big gutsy call by Hearn. It had to be made though. Naslin had come right to the front of the goal. He was in a scoring situation. Wawrinka did what he had to do. That is a good penalty if there can be such a, th uh, such a thing as a good penalty at this point in the game. Naslin was by Wawrinka. He had to put the hook on him. Ridmark looked right at the referee and said, hey, how about that? 17.50 gone in the second period. What an opportunity now for the Swedes with a man advantage to try and score before the end of this game. This one is live. And we are going to stay with it right till the end. Until the medals are decided. So don't leave. We aren't going anywhere, that's for sure. To hear Rennie yelling, Wally. Schreiber, one of the best penalty killers on the team. It looks like he's going to start it out. Schreiber just outside the faceoff circle. 10 for 45. 82.5% killing them off. Johnson, Schreiber, Harlock, and Mayer right now for the Canadians. 33-year-old Hack and Lube is out there. Forsberg is being told to get out of the circle. Schreiber will move in for Canada. Bergfist that comes back and out over the line. Janssen gives it to Svensson. Both defensemen have great shots from back at the blue. Janssen and Svensson. Forsberg. A lot of pressure on this youngster. That comes back to Janssen. Janssen has got Svensson. The two overlap. Forsberg moves in. Drops it back. Shot goes in. They score! Power play goal. The Swedes have leveled it. Big shot. Well, what did we say? These guys have boomers from the blue line. What action. Paul, we're beating each other up as much in this commentary area as the players are on the ice. The elbows are going. You're going to be getting a penalty from me in a minute if you hit me one more time. What action. The Swedes have come back and leveled the score. Janssen moving it from the point. It goes down low to Forsberg. He drops it back immediately. The shot is taken. The Swedes have scored. Look at the traffic in front of Hirsch. 
We've got Bergfist going up, Myers one where everyone converges on him, and Spencer gets credit for that. Power play goal. 18-11 of the third period. It was like a beehive around the front of the goal. Svensson was spinning circles out at center ice, celebrating. Both Swedish goals have come on the power play. Still a lot of hockey to be played out there. From the faceoff, the Canadians started off with Lovson. Tap along the boards and the Swedes pick it up right away. Johansson tries to get it into Canadian territory. Svensson is there muscling on the red line and Johansson goes deep. Johansson taken off the puck by Lusko, but the Canadians go back on the defensive. Canada shoots it right back in with Lovson. Svensson. Svensson now can afford to take his time. The score is two apiece. This could go into overtime. Bergfist. Good move. Shot from a sharp angle. And Hirsch had to be on it. Schlegel is all over Bergfish. Warenka trying to get it out. One minute remaining on the game. The score is all tied up as Forsberg moves in. Hansen roughs it up. Warenka is there, a two-on-two -two situation. Neither sets of twos are giving an inch. Hakalub shoots it in. That's steered into the corner. The Swedes now go back on the defensive as Canada from the red line. No room to move out there as Johnson slows it down and brings it up on the right side. The Swedes have had the better of the play of this last minute and a half. Harloff drops it over to Meyer. 25 seconds now. Time ticking down as the Canadians fire it in. Contos puts it along the boards. Canada looking to set it up. Johnson almost lost it. Janssen, up to another Janssen, Jorgen Janssen, that bounces down, it looks like this one's going to go into overtime, Harlock with a lot of time, five seconds on the clock, the long pass up to Nedved is a two-liner, boy what a finish on this gold medal final, this crowd of 9,000 plus are all on the edges of their seats, a lot of pressure on both coaches, but in particular, in particular, Tom Rennie, the younger of the two. He's aging by the minute over there on the bench. Rennie, who's come from nowhere as, as well as Dubé. Dubé was the Trois Rivières University coach, and Rennie's come from the junior ranks, taking the Canadian junior team to a few championships. These guys have done a great job for the Canadians. Nedved in charge of taking this face off and that goes back and that'll be the game Lovson touches it whoa 2-2 two -two. Johnson started things with a power play goal in the first period no scoring in the second and then Korea made it 1-1 Mayer for Canada made it 2-1 right at the end of the game the Canadians get a penalty with Wolrenka in the box Svensson comes up with a power play goal to make it two apiece that's the way it stands. Two power play goals for the Swedes. Well, Bobes, I'm going to put you on the spot. We've got a sudden death overtime goal. How's it going to go? I've got to stick to my guns. I'm going to have to stick with the Swedes. Canadians have fought back in this third period and done an outstanding job. And then the Swedes had to come back. Both teams are one shot away from a gold medal. Well, as you can see, it's all tied up. The players have gone to their respective dressing rooms for a well-deserved break. It'll come back with overtime. And we've got the Eurosport News coming up. More highlights from the Olympics, so stay with us. We're going to have the sudden death 10-minute overtime period in just a moment. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. Paul Ferguson here with Richard Beaupre. The teams are coming out on the ice. And it's overtime at the Olympics. Both teams a shot away from the gold medal. We've had four overtime games in these Olympics so far. The French beating the Austrians in a real exciting one. That went to a shootout 5-4. The Canadians beating the Czech Republic 3-2 in overtime. The Russians beating the Slovakians 3-2 in overtime. Then the Slovakians beating the Germans 6-5 in overtime. It really has been the most exciting part of the game when you get into overtime. The first goal is the one that decides it. The Canadians now looking as calm and cool as the Swedes who went before them. Excellent atmosphere. No one has left this building. Well over 9,000 people here, and this is just a great finish to 16 days of fantastic hockey in Norway. Both Jovik and Little Hammer have entertained, and boy, they should be proud of what they have done to excellent ice hockey arenas, and they really have pulled out all the stops to provide excellent facilities and entertainment for the people who have come into these buildings. After three periods of play, the Swedes had outshot the Canadians 38-19. Two big third period goals from Canada. And inside of two minutes, the Swedes having to come back to level it. You can take those statistics and throw them away because it's all down to one shot going into the net for either one of these teams. The Canadians are playing from right to left. And no one will want to make a mistake out there. That's for sure. Mayor. Bergfest, Janssen, Janssen who scored the first goal of the game just flips it high in a Canadian territory, Harlock is there, Harlock gets it out, Korea unable to slow down Forsberg, Forsberg shoots it in, Mayer is back for Canada, the Canadians looking to get it out of the zone and they just dump it into neutralized territory. Janssen puts it on the far side of the rink and both teams are going for another quick change. Harlock got it up on the boards and that was tipped. Rudmark is there, Yulene is back. Yulene into trouble. Joseph, the captain for Canada, providing some good forechecking. Yulene starts it up. This guy's got the good shot. Yulene, that's a shot go! And that goes upstairs. Hirsch, well out of his net. One minute now gone. Yulin taking off the play. Johnson starts it. Johnson up on the wing. Canada. Rink wide pass. Wawrenka, the defenseman. One or two Swedes thought that might be an offside. Didn't happen. Wawrenka with Ridmark. The official saying keep it going, keep it going. The Swedes get it as that's kicked out. The chances. The shot goes in right on the money. Johansson let it go, but Hirsch saw that one all the way and he forces the face off another change out there and that's going to be the order of the day quick changes they can't afford to have anyone dragging or lagging behind and it's so important to change at the right time both of these teams can go defense to offense so quickly you've got to make sure the puck is deep in the other team's end before you dare to go over the, to the bench big shot earlier from Yulene boy did he get that one off the Swedes have never won a gold medal the Canadians have been without gold for 42 years. Schlegel. Wah. Wah just happy to get it out of the zone. Wah loses out on the blue. Janssen. Janssen taps it back. Ornskog. Ornskog circles in the corner. Right out front. Oh, and a tip went the other way. Right from the side of the net. Janssen took a heavy hit right in front. And Lube was right there. The Canadians lucky to escape. Mayer trying to get away from Lube. The Canadians struggle in their own zone. That bounces into neutralized territory. Lube picks it up and just taps it in. Both teams again going for a change. Nedved, the big gun for Canada. His pass is a long one, goes all the way down the ice. Janssen is there. Kenny Janssen drops it back and the Swedes have to go back on the defense to pick it up. Bergfest moves in in a hurry. Harlock got it over. Lovson fires that into the corner and the Swedes 
and the Canadians chase. Canada trying to keep it in with Lushko and Joseph fighting in the corner. Forsberg, Forsberg motors, hits the blue, hits the red, just tips it in again. And both teams continue to change on the fly. Hansen moves in now. Hansen poke checked off the play. Bergfist is dumped and that falls underneath him. And I'm sure the Canadians will want this face off out of the zone if they can get it. Face-offs are very critical at this point in the game. You can bet you're going to have your expert out there to take the draw, especially in your defensive zone. Anxious moments for both teams. Norris and Ann Savage on the bench, both looking eager to get back on the ice. Face-off is in the Canadian zone, coming up to three minutes of this period. Johnson against Ridmark. Johnson gets it back, and Mayer stops the Canadians now with Mayer and Johnson. Johnson can't control the puck on the wing. Ridmark gets way deep in his own zone. That bounces off the boards. The Swedes happy to get it out of the zone. Warenka is chased. Neither team able to set anything up here in this overtime period. Canada looking to set it up with Korea and Contos. Naslin shadowed by Korea. The drop pass. Time ticking down on the overtime period. Svensson. Svensson. Dropping it off on the wing. Yulin. Bounces it off the boards and gives it right to Canada. Warenka gets by Yulin. Warenka's got good moves. Warenka continues to go into the corner, right to the far side of the rink, all the way back. Nedved taps it in the corner. Four minutes gone in the period. The Swedes start it up slowly. Sweden. Ornskog, the backhand shot on the glove side. Lube in the corner. Lube is manhandled. Trying to get that puck around the back of the net. Lube looks up and then looks down as he tries to kick that puck free. Ornskog against Waugh. Waugh sends it sailing along the boards and it's tough along the woodwork. Ornskog and Waugh team up now. Waugh pins Ornskog against the boards and there's no way anyone is going to move those two. Waugh doing a good defensive job for a forward. Playing it tough along the boards. This is where defensive skills are so key all over the world. There are lots of kids who can score goals, but can they help to prevent them like Waugh and, well, just about everybody on the ice out there? You've got to be physical in your own zone. You've got to know how to take guys out, and these guys are doing it. More than any time, a goal is a bonus. You want to keep the other team from scoring. That's your job. That's what you've got to be thinking when you get on the ice. is not happy he's being sent out of the face-off circle Joseph will take over and Joseph kicks it over to the wing Bergfist got a tip on that but the Canadians pick it up along the boards the Canadians breaking with three four players now Joseph speeds into the corner Joseph being held from behind big hit on Yotsen oh my lord shot and that's gloved down Janssen is out of it. The two players were fighting for that puck. And Hearn has a tough decision here. Is the crowd going to influence him? Look at he's out. Absolutely right, Paul. He is unconscious. Janssen is not even moving. That is frightening to see. Lundmark is not happy. The whistles and the jeers, and no one likes to see this kind of thing happen, but it does happen in hockey. Janssen is saying he's all right. It looks like he nodded his head there for a moment. And the pressure is on this guy. Nothing has been called yet. Let's look at this again. Janssen going back. They're not going to be in any hurry to try and get him up. 
big hit is taken. He turns right into it. He goes flying into the board. Johnson really goes off his feet. Anxious moments for both teams. Was that charging? Was that boarding? That's a real tough call because Johnson was away from the boards at the time of the hit. He didn't see it coming. It was a legal hit as far as a hit goes. Shoulder was in there, but whether it was a charge, whether it's called boarding, it's up to the referee. It's a discretionary call. The unfortunate thing for young Kenny Johnson is that he was right near the boards and he went in heavily. This guy is the number one draft pick, the Toronto Maple Leafs in 93. Four forty-seven. What will that do to the Swedish team? Hansen to Bergfist. No penalty on the plate. Five minutes gone. The Swedes starting it out. A little tip from behind and the Swedes go back on the defensive as Mayer, the big defenseman, comes up quickly. Gives it to Korea. Korea guns it into the far corner. Large chop. Forsberg picks that up. Forsberg slows it down. Comes up to the red line. Forsberg now starts to move. Takes the shot. And that's tipped behind the goal. Schlegel got a piece of it. Hansen can't slow it down. And Svensson is there for the Swedes. The Swedes changing on the fly. Thomas Janssen along the boards. Schlegel. Naslin takes him out of the play. And we have another whistle on the play as that puck went high. Schlegel having a quick word with Hirsch just to make sure the communication is right. Canadians not wanting to take chances. Time is ticking down on this overtime period. It's all tied up at two of police. Thomas Johnson, Svensson for Sweden, Korea, and Mayer for Canada. Well, that's the way it stands. Savage moves in for Canada. These face-offs all important. Rudmark for Sweden. Norris has to take over from Savage. Jonsson on the bench. Looks like he's going to the dressing room. Yulin spun out of the play by Norris. Norris kicks out along the boards but can't set it free. The Swedes muscling. Norris again comes up with a puck. Coming up to the six minute mark. There was a lot of clutching and grabbing back in that corner. Schlegel drops it back. The Canadians trying to get it in the zone and keep it there. From behind the net. Korea. Norris runs interference out front. Korea tried to put it out front. Salo got the tip and back come the Swedes. Yulin. And again, a lot of jeers from the crowd as they want Hearn to call the penalties out there. Hearn has put his whistle in his pocket. The Canadians at the side of the net. Salo pushes that away. Norris unable to get a handle on it. And Canada go back at their own blue line. Warenka. Schreiber takes the shot and that hit a defenseman and is knocked away. Warenka passes it right through. That goes over the blue line. Janssen is chased by Schreiber. Again, neither team wants to make a mistake. Everyone's staying back. Sweden breaking quickly now. Listen to the roar from this crowd. Spenson, the defenseman, goes in against Warenka. Warenka pins him along the boards. Canada get it out and it's shot right back in by Janssen. Offside is the call. Janssen thought he had it right on the blue line or he was hoping that's what the officials thought he was doing. Nevertheless it was the right thing to do to just pump it right back in there. There were two Canadians on the move and had Janssen messed around with the puck there the Swedes would have been in trouble. Stillman on the bench. He blocked that shot from Schreiber and he's feeling that one right now. Looks like Stillman got that in the back of the knee. I can assure you there isn't any protection back there. 
If, you, if there was, you'd have a lot of guys skating around like robots. Loveson, Harlock, Loveson, Lube chases. Good move by Loveson as that's tipped into the zone. Ornskog, Waugh goes in after him. Bouncing puck is contained by Svensson. Svensson with Waugh all over his back. Svensson carries on. Schreiber puts it to the far side. Ornskog rattles it off the woodwork and the Canadians with Loveson shoot it right back in. Canada has to clear the zone before they get in there. Schreiber, a big hook. Ornskog doubles back, gives it to Janssen. The Canadians are putting a lot of pressure on the Swedes. And it looks, for the moment anyway, that perhaps the Canadians are a little fresher out there. Sweden shoot it in. Kontos backhands it all the way down to Janssen at his own blue line. Coming up to the final two minutes. Bergfist drops it back and the Canadians pick it up. Canada breaking it on the far side. The shot comes in. Again, it's deflected away before it gets to Salo. Kontos takes a swipe at it, throws it in the zone. Korea picks that up. Good vision from Korea. Korea to Kontos. His shot is right on the target. Salo had no problem with that. All the way back to the blue line. Mayer peppers it in. The Swedes under pressure now as the second stick down. A bouncing puck comes up to Forsberg. Good move by Forsberg, but he can't get the shot away. A loose puck is right in front. Warenka eventually clears it up. Canada come back. Korea. Wide shot, and that bubbles all the way down the ice, and this is end-to-end -end action. What a finish to a brilliant hockey game. No one is leaving this building. Stillman rattles it right back in. Canada, again, they sense the second sticking down. Johnson, one minute remaining. Johnson with Joseph. The shot is wide of the target. Lushko. Sweden under pressure again. Johansson gets it out. Lube is double teamed. Joseph goes in and applies the pressure as Johansson goes in and helps pin that along the boards. What an overtime period. You just can't ask any more from these two teams. The puck is moving so fast now, going around the puck boards that both teams are finding it a hard time to try and keep up to the puck. They're tired. They've both been playing the body. We've seen great individual stuff from Korea going one way, Forsberg going the other way. The Canadians beat the Swedes earlier on in the competition 3-2, to two, and the Canadians beat the Czechs 3-2 to two in overtime, so they've got an overtime victory on their side. They've got a victory against the Swedes on their side. Does that help psychologically? I don't think so. I don't know why I said that. Sounds good, though, Paul. I like the way you picked that trivia right back up and went at it. What an exciting game. What a finish to a great 16-day competition. You can't, as you said, Bopes, ask much more from these players. Eight games in 16 days, two overtime games for the Canadians, and they're still going at it. Nineteen thirteen gone on the period. Forty seven seconds. Johnson gets that through and the Swedes pick it up. Janssen now for the Swedes. Lube shot. Hit the defenseman. Warenka for a moment lost it to Janssen. Warenka, Lube, and Janssen move in there. Korea wants it pushed along the boards. The seconds are ticking down. Johnson is not giving any space out there to Lube, and Lube is pinned. Another face-off. And again, Bopes, an all-important face-off. Every face-off is important, but this will be one of the most crucial in the competition. Assignments are very critical now. Everybody knows who they've got, or they're going to certainly talk it over and make sure that everybody knows who they've got. The Swedes want to get the draw and get it back into shooting position. The Canadians, of course, want to get the draw and take it away from shooting position. Parks, number 22, who plays his hockey in Sweden, has the big assignment. Ornskog is there for Sweden. 20 seconds. Parks wins it and Meyer gets it up. 
passed up on the wing, and that's tipped high along the boards. Lushko got a piece of it. Forsberg couldn't get it out. Mayer tries to muscle his way through. Five seconds. That comes back. A long clearance up. That's given away. Two seconds. Svensson takes the shot. Whoa, we're into shootout. Right at the buzzer. Hirsch called on to make the save. Svensson directing it at the Canadian goal. What action from these two teams. Both coaches will sharpen the pencils up, get the notebooks out. They're going to have to pick five players each. They'll have a bite at the cherry. At the end of it, we'll see who has the most goals. If no one has a lead, then they'll pick another five, and they'll just keep going in a sudden death shootout. Both teams will get a little bit of a rest here. Hearn has got things to do. There'll be a coin toss. They'll flip to see who's going first, what end is what. One thing to remember as well, we've had 10 minutes of overtime played on this ice. Both teams have been stopping and starting. It's been fast paced. You're going to see the puck taking weird bounces again. Hearn is going to get his list from the Swedes and the Canadians. And this is so important and Bopes you were a forward, this is the kind of thing you do in practice every time you practice. Even if you do it for fun, for a, a soft drink, or a beer, a dollar, whatever. It's the kind of thing you'll do at the end of a practice and you'll say, okay, the last guy standing, the guy who keeps scoring, will get the beer. That's right, and it's always a big joke in practice. Well, not always a big joke. A lot of times it's taken as a joke, but it's times like this when the serious goal scorers and every team is always going to have a defenseman or two that are very good on these penalty shootouts. So it'll be interesting to see who both coaches pick. The pressure will be on the guys out on the ice. The goalies will go out there one turn at a time and the spotlight is on them and you can see the Sweden lineup. Lube, Svensson, Nasland, Forsberg and Hansen for Sweden. The Canadians appear to be still talking it over. Rennie does not want to make a slip up now. We remember against Germany in 92 the Canadians with Lindros scoring a goal and the Germans this was into the second Oh, uh, set up shootout. Dreisaitl went down, put it beyond the goaltender, Sean Burke, but it rested right on the red line. The Canadians won because that puck did not clearly go over the red line. Dramatical moments they were. Coach Rennie's turned in the list. It's Gretzky, Messier. Oh, wait a minute. I got the <laughs> wrong one. Sorry about that. He would love to have the likes of Messier, Gretzky, and... But then again, the Swedes could have a few stars of their own here. To be serious, I saw Nedved on that list first. I'm sure Korea will be out there. We'll have to wait until they are announced. The list is now being handed to the timekeeper. Hearn, in that final 10-minute period, put away his whistle. He doesn't have to worry now. Joseph and Berglund, the respective captains, are there to witness the toss of the coin the winner will get his choice do you want to go first Sweden do you want to go first Canada that's the decision they'll have to make is there a strategy I guess if you go first and you score then the other team are always playing catch up hockey right but if you go first and don't score then if the other team does at the end of it you're playing catch up <laughs> hockey Puck is placed at center. The goaltender is between the pipes. You get one bite of the cherry. You can't get a rebound. You can't circle the net. You can't show your mother in the stands that you've got the puck and go over there. You got to go directly towards the goal. I'll refer to this one more time. El Gotson flying out of here to go and witness his wife having a baby girl. He's probably pacing as much right now as he did in the hospital yesterday morning. He sees his teammate Tommy Salo go back to the goal. Tense moments for everybody involved. The spectators in this place are right on the edge of their seats or some of them aren't even bothering to sit. There's more people standing than sitting. Nedved is the first to go for Canada. 
This is a dramatic finish to a brilliant hockey game. Both teams really gave everything they had. It's all tied up after overtime, and here is the first of five penalty shots. Nedved. Whoa! One for Canada. Salo went down. Couldn't stop the puck from going in the net. High fives all around for Nedved. Let's watch this again. Nedved going in, just elects to shoot. He lets the goaltender make his move first. Puts it up high over Tommy Salo. You've got to remember, folks, that the ice is all chewed up out there. If you come in and try to dipsy doodle, stick handle, whatever, then you could lose control of that puck and lose your shot altogether. Hack and lube. 33 years old. He's been a world championship winner. He's been a Stanley Cup winner. He wants a gold medal. He misses Hirsch with the save. Lube is looking for the big treble out there, as you said, Bobes. He'll be the only person in history to do it. And this isn't going to help his cause. Lube, the right-handed shot goes in, tries to pick the five hole between the pads. Hirsch looks around, can't believe he made the save. The puck has gone the other way. Hirsch did the right thing, though, by keeping his stick on the ice. The legs have to be open when the goalie goes down, but he had the stick in the way. Paul Correa, the wonder boy for Canada. A lot of pressure on him. 19 years old, still a college student. Korea puts it upstairs, 2-0 Canada. Well, I don't know if they've watched the tapes or not. Salo went down pretty quick again. Two shots, two goals upstairs on Salo. This is the guy who was drafted number one by Anaheim. The Mighty Ducks won him bad. Glanced off the arm of Salo. That was a rocket of a shot, and having played goal for a while, that's what I would hate to see most. The big shot from about 15 feet out. Svensson is now, up. Now we see a defenseman taking a shot. That was nice. Svensson looking like a forward. When you're a forward, you just hate stuff like that. Defenseman making it look easy. But when you're on the same team and it's just kind of a situation, the high fives and the congratulations are going to be there for Svensson. Great goal. A big guy coming in. Fakes the shot. Good shoulder fake. Keeps it on the forehand. Hirsch sprawled out. That's a nice goal. We'll go back to the bench and have somebody put his shoulder back into place. Norris for Canada is number three to come up. Norris starts up slowly. Norris goes in, fakes, and Salo makes the save. Salo went down well before Norris had made the move, and Norris put it right into him. He certainly did. I'll bet Norris will wish he would have put that one up a little higher. Salo lucky to get away with that one. Norris with a good move, fakes the shot, goes to the backhand. Salo got the stick out there. Norris faked the shot on the forehand, and Salo slid the pads out to cover it. But, uh, well, perhaps he was in a little too close to get that shot away. Mats Naslin. That's no good. Naslin unable to do it on the backhand side. You wouldn't have thought that Mats Naslin would have struggled like that. That wasn't even close. Naslin really looked nervous on that one. He's been through this many times before. Naslin goes in. The puck does stand up on him, though. Well, it's easier said than done. This is what we were talking about earlier. You start to play with the puck, and look at the bounces. He doesn't even get wood on that. A lot of snow, a lot of chipped ice. The Canadians have two goals. The Swedes have one. Greg Parks for Canada is the fourth shooter. Parks puts it right in the pad. Salo holds on. The Swedes need a goal now and they need it bad. 
This is a critical shot right here. They need a goal. If they miss and the Canadians score, it's history. Parks going in. He's going to shoot all the way. You can see that. He keeps it low. Salah holds his ground well, keeps the pads together. Excellent stuff from Salo. Let's keep that out of the net. The Canadians still hanging on to that one goal lead in the shootout. This will be Peter Forsberg, number 21, the golden boy from Sweden. Forsberg fakes, scores! Good move! Well, he made that one look easy. Great move by the kid. Forsberg, who plays for his dad in Modo, on his way to the NHL. Great move. What nerve shown by the 20-year-old kid. One shot apiece. This is it, folks. If it's still tied, then they'll carry on into a sudden death shootout. Greg Johnson with that beat up eye and nose starts out for Canada. Johnson, number 12, the left handed shooter, shoots and Salo makes the save. Whoa, what can you say? The Canadians scoring their first two opportunities. Nedved and Korea making it look simple. Norris Parks. And now Johnson hitting Salo with the shots. The Swedes have the one last chance here. A goal, and it's a gold medal. Naslin sitting on the bench. I'm sure that shot of his is going through his mind. Hansen, oh, what a tough position to be in. This is my player out there that I said was one of the top on the Swedish team. He doesn't receive the recognition he deserves because there's so many great players out there. Hansen is blocked by Hirsch. Hirsch looks so cool as he slid to his right and stayed with him. Well, I'll speak for myself, Paul. I know the players and the coaches are finding this stressful. You look younger than me now, and I'm aging by the minute. I'll speak for myself. What an opportunity. The Swedes just can't put it away. Hirsch holds his ground. Hansen makes the fake, but then the pad is right there. Hirsch knew what he was doing on that one. Five shots, two goals apiece. Nedved in Korea started things out and made it look like they were going to get five in a row. Lube was unable to put the puck in the net, but Svensson and Forsberg did. Naslin missed, Hansen missed, Norris, Parks, and Johnson missed for Canada. Paul, I'll be right back. I'm going to go have a quick shower and get a hot dog. I'll see you in a few minutes. Nobody is moving in this building. You're absolutely right. Hearn is talking to Kurt Lundmark about the procedure. He wants more names. And unless I've got it wrong, it shouldn't be a, it should be a sudden death. And the names should be different. They should be another set of fives. That was one of the complaints in the 92 Olympics when Canada beat Germany. The Germans complained that Lindros had a second goal and he scored on his second shot. Dreisaitl, who also had a second goal, missed on his, but they're saying that shouldn't have happened in the first place. There weren't horns on that hat when this game started. Boy, this is tense. Here comes the second list. Well, we'll scrap these guys and we'll try it again.
Well, the names for Sweden now are complete. Svensson. He said Svensson first man. Svensson is already gone. So they're allowed to use. It looks like they're allowed to use some of those players, but they can't use them in the same order. Forsberg's going to be going second. I could hear Coach Lundmark saying that. Tough assignments for these guys. Rennie now talking with the American referee. A different strategy now. You really can't afford to miss out there. I mean, you couldn't afford to miss before, but now it's sudden death. Rennie is maintaining his cool. It's all down to goaltenders and the individual shooters. Hearn seems happy with the names he's got, but he's going over to the timekeeper to give them the list. Well, we checked this out before the game, and we were told that it would be sudden death. Sweden are going to shoot first, but we were told it's sudden death. We hope that is still the case. Hirsch goes out between the pipes. You're right on the first call. Medved had gone first for the Canadians. This time the Swedes will go first. Hirsch banging the pipes, getting himself loose. Svensson, who scored in the first round, has the first opportunity for Sweden. Svensson. Comes in, puts the fake on. This time it doesn't work. Hirsch has seen that act before. The last time it did work, this time no. Look at that fake and Hirsch stays with him. That's good goaltending. Svensson going to the forehand again with a shoulder fake. Hirsch does an excellent job of going the same way. Canada up now. Hirsch can't look. Hirsch has got his back to the rink. Nedved is out there. He was the first to go last time. And he's the first to go for Canada this time. They have been able to keep the order. Nedved goes in, fakes. Oh, and he misses! Whoa. It looked to me as though he was going to put that one away. He had Salo beaten. Nedved not happy with himself about that one. Peter Nedved coming into the goal. Forehand to backhand. He's got room and he just simply can't put it home. A little fake. The head goes down. And as you say, he's got that right side of the net as he looked at it. Hirsch goes back in goal. The referee is lined up along with the linesman, Forsberg now. Forsberg on the forehand, Forsberg. Whoa, that was sweet. Whoa. This is, that was just like an NBA slam dunk competition. What a move there. He did that in practice or in a regular season game. He'd have somebody coming out and chopping him for that one. He got away with it. What a move by this kid. Watch Forsberg going into the goal. Forehand, backhand. What's he going to do? Oh, well, I'll keep it on the backhand with one hand on my stick. Plain and simple. Great play by Forsberg. Hurst did everything he could do to stay with him. Forsberg moving to his left. And the goaltender Hirsch moving to his right, and Hirsch was already, as you say, traveling east. <laughs> east, west, you're right. That kid showed a lot of cheat pulling that move off. Korea, the order so far for Canada is the same. So much for the theory about the change of policy. Korea, Korea, Salo, the Swedes win it. Salo is the hero. The Swedes have picked up gold. Korea couldn't put it behind the goaltender. It's a pity it had to go into overtime, but or into a shootout after overtime, because both teams fought so hard. There are no real losers in this one. 
but the Swedes come up with a gold. Canada gets silver, and we already know the Finns have the bronze. What a finish to an incredible hockey game. Unbelievable. The veterans, the rookies, the young kids are all celebrating. Hacken Lube has completed the triple. He now has his Olympic gold medal, but coming right down to it, the veterans, the Janssens, take your pick. These guys that are in their 30s, late 20s, watch a 20-year-old kid and a 19-year-old kid be the deciders. Forsberg, the 20-year-old, putting it away for the Swedes. Korea, who is a tremendous hockey player, unable to score. Korea will be going to Anaheim. Forsberg will be going to Quebec. You're going to hear about those two kids in the NHL for a long time to come. But right now, it's all about Olympic hockey, and these guys are the Olympic champions, and these people know it. They came here as the favorites. They struggled for a while, winning five, losing one, and tying one. The best record in the competition was from Finland, but the Canadians got through on the same record, five, one, and one. And the final was fought here in Hacken Hall in Littlehammer. And these guys just came out on top after the shootout. Unbelievable. You can see the coaches over there, Rennie and Dubé, congratulating Lundmark. That's great sportsmanship. Unbelievable scenes. The Swedes are just so happy. They can't believe it out there. take a break now and wait we're going to come back for the medal ceremony but in the meantime we're going to show you the bobsled four man third and fourth run so stay with us more action from the Olympics and we're going to come back to the live action from the medal ceremony the Swedes are going to be doing this all night long the Canadians have the silver but they're in no way in the same move. There's the goal that did it. And what a goal it was from Forsberg. Hirsch could not stop himself from coming out of that crease. He was on the move. A brilliant move from the youngster. This team with so much depth, so much talent, really did deserve to win this goal. No doubt about it. They absolutely did, Paul. That's a good call. The Canadians just don't deserve to lose, though. That's the only sad thing, that somebody has to lose at the end of the day. Canadians fought so hard, and they come up with the silver medal. Just had a look at Janssen, who's out there. He was the one who was knocked out in the corner. He's back on his feet. He's smiling, and that's a good sign. The Canadians still very, very dejected. Hurst doesn't even want to take off his helmet. But they have picked up silver, and they have nothing to be ashamed of. We're going to take a break. Stay with us. The four-man Bob is coming up in a moment. All 12 of them really did excite and entertain. It's been fantastic, Paul. We have seen excellent hockey played all the way down the line, right down to Austria, who finished 12. Exciting stuff from everybody. As you said, Bobes, the Austrians finished 12th, Norway in 11th. The French were in 10th position, the Italians in 9th, USA 8th, Germany 7th, Slovakia, a good performance from them. As I said, they made a lot of friends here. They were in 6th, the Czechs in 5th, and the Russians in 4th, the first time ever since 1958 that they haven't been able to pick up some kind of medal. The Finns got the bronze, and they were... For me, one of the top teams in the table, only losing one game out of eight. Canada will get the silver, and the Swedes will pick up the gold for the first time. And boy, are they happy. The 
Kings Royal Guards out there. Marching into position as are the players and the team members. It's not just the players that make up the team. There are a lot of statisticians. There are trainers, doctors, coaches, media representatives. And these guys are uh, all part of the team. The Finns, who played yesterday and shut out the Russians for the second time in the competition. The first time they did it, 5-0. When it counted yesterday, it was 4-0, and they picked up the bronze. They're out there. The Swedes in the middle. The Canadians are on the left-hand side. Dean of the Elite International Olympic Committee. Men's utdelingen av blomster vil bli foretatt av, and the distribution of flowers will be carried out by Mr. Gilter Zavetsky, President of the International Ice Hockey Federation. Mr. Gordon Redwick, Vice President of the International Ice Hockey Federation. And Mr. Diet Roth, President of the Norwegian Ice Hockey Association. Well, I'm sure you could hear the announcement in the background. Gunther Sabetsky, the president of the International Ice Hockey Federation, is here. Gordon Rennick, the vice president, who some say will soon become the president. And they're all out there to present the medals and the flowers as the Swedes now step forward. Charles Berglund, the captain. And what a performance from these guys. Excellent stuff from the Swedes as they, they get into their wave and send it down the, the team list. The Canadians, Fabian Joseph, doesn't look quite as happy, but uh, as I said before, the Canadians with their silver have nothing to be ashamed of. They really did come here as underdogs. They had an untried, untested team, whereas the Swedes had a lot of experienced performers at international level. The Canadians with some NHL players, Nedved, Kantos, these guys had been there before, but uh, on the international scene they hadn't done a lot. Some college kids, some international hockey players, and the Canadians really did put it together when it counts. The Finns, well, for me, and I've said it so many times, they looked so sharp. They really did. They played excellent hockey under their Swedish coach. And they deserve at least the bronze. Timo Utila, the team captain who wears number five on the defense, I'm sure will be proud of the finished performance in these games. You can still see Utila's face yesterday, the look of devastation as he was sitting on the bench long after things were finished and done with. He just didn't want to give in to it, the fact that he wasn't playing for the gold medal and he had to accept the bronze. Well, both teams now, well, I should say all three teams are being presented with their medals. And uh, while we're watching this, Bobes, how about casting your mind back over the 16 days? Highlights? There have been a lot of them. Highlights, I think, obviously, we keep talking about the Slovakians. Palfi, Danos, Stasny, those three guys are going to stick in the minds of a lot of people for a number of years. A gutsy performance by them. I think this Canadian team, coming out of nowhere, like you said, Paul, names from where, who are they, where they come from, the coach, who's he, where did he come from? Well, they've proven to everybody they're for real, and they're going to go back home. And a lot of these guys have set themselves up nicely, I would think, from their performance in these Olympic Games. Well, I guess for me was the surprise that the Russians were not really themselves, and that's a pity. A lot of their players have gone all over Europe and all over North America. Money, of course, the big attraction. These guys are taken as soon as they can lace up their skates and hold a stick, and it has left the Russians without a team to fight for the medals, and I don't know when they'll be back. I hope they'll be back soon. It makes a change, everybody says, but it's 
you know, it's difficult for people like Tikhanov and Mikhailov to get teams together. Still, they were in the final four. They did a lot with what they had, and they have to be proud of that, even though they didn't come up with a medal for the first time, as I said, since 1958. But they did a lot with what they had. Another big, or another highlight for me, was the German game against the Russians. And the Germans, although they were down the pack, did put in some fine performances. The Germans are coming up with younger players, and they have a great future in German hockey. Some of the older players are stepping aside and the youngsters are coming through. Norway, you look at them, you say, well, they were right down second from bottom. What did they do? Knudsen, boy, he dazzled. He could stay with the best in the world. So Norway have a lot to look forward to. They've got a few young players coming up. Gerhoff is looking better all the time. Dalston, these guys are excellent hockey players, so they have nothing to be afraid of, nothing to be ashamed of. Another note to remember is the fact that the Czech Republic, a team that didn't get any publicity, no media attention compared to the Slovakians and the Swedes and the Finns who came in here, the Swedes and the Finns as early tournament favorites. The Canadians, the Americans, of course, always have a big group of supporters with them. The press is very big in North America, but the Czech Republic finished on a high note, a convincing victory over the Slovakians, 7-1, and they showed to everybody the class that they really have. The Czechs lost out just at the last moment and were knocked out of the knocked out of contention for the medal round but uh, they ended up in fifth place one ahead of the Slovaks and as you say both the Czechs are still a world power when it comes to ice hockey and that's a nice thing to see Kenny Johnson who was knocked into the corner still a bit red faced perhaps a little dazed but uh, nothing I'm sure would keep him from collecting his medal he stays pretty close to Thomas Janssen. On the ice, they play together, and he's lined up right next to him. That was another nice moment to see. Thomas Janssen accept a gold medal, a guy who's right at the end of his career. He's 33 years old. He had a number of very successful seasons with the New York Islanders in the NHL, a well-respected defenseman around the world. That is a good moment. Well, we've had 16 days of ice hockey. For the most part, three games a day. I don't know about you people out there, but we're going to go back to our families and introduce ourselves to our wives and our kids, and perhaps you'll do the same. Uh, we understand there are one or two hockey widows out there. Maybe on Monday you can start living together again as a family. We apologize for the interruption in your lives, but we hope you have enjoyed it, and hopefully we will be with you in April when the World Championships are held in Italy. All these teams, or at least most of these teams, will be there. The Slovaks won't, but uh, and Great Britain will. Um, so we hope you will join us. That starts on the 25th of April and goes right through until the 8th of May, and it's more of the same. Right now, we're going to take a pause and listen to the national anthem for Sweden. The winners of the gold medal in this Olympic competition. And that's a nice sight to see, the Canadians congratulating the winners. get the gold and Mats Naslin with that unshaven look has got to be a happy man he's coming to the end of his career 34 years old he's played eight years in the National Hockey League and he really enjoyed this tournament but this must be one of the highlights his third Olympics and finally he gets gold the Canadians as I said, we're outsiders, and they came here and picked up the silver. An excellent job by them, a team thrown together. 
at the last moment. The Finns were always strong right from day one. I'd pick them as the team to go the distance. They lost that one game against Canada and that took them out of it. But uh, it's the Swedes who hold the gold, Canada the silver, and Finland the bronze. Paul, I'd like to say thanks for the experience. It's been good fun. And thanks to everybody at Eurosport for a job well done. It's all